damn gary some serious gourmet shit what flavor is this that's right it's the all hell medium roast private blend check out the geek grind coffee nerdrotic page for our other options like the decadent feathers of liberty vanilla infused flavored coffee or if you're looking for something darker try the dark roast fnt blend of the fellowship you know what just buy all three geekgrindcoffee.com use discount code nerdrotic I'm clapping. I am clapping. You can't see it, but I am clapping. <laughs> These are claps. Clapping cheeks. Claps are happening. Take it back. Take it. I'm also not wearing pants, but I'm not sure you want to see that either. But... Neither am I. <laughs> do, do any of us ever wear pants? I don't think so. Well, well yeah. That's I wear true. pants. It's a little never overrated. Know. It's a little <laughs> overrated. Yeah, I like to, you know, have little bits and jangles kind of flowing in the wind, you know. Nice. Welcome yeah. to Friday Night Tights, everybody. It's <laughs> dumb, though. That whole, hey. that whole, that whole uh, not wearing pants meme is a little old. It's not like anybody would show their dick on FNT anyway. I know. <laughs> it's ridiculous. There's <laughs> the thought. No. <laughs> it's funny that you bring that up, Jeremy. I'm sure that's come up later. Uh, uh, welcome to Friday Night Tights, ladies and gentlemen, from Paris, France. Oh, I am happy. in Paris. Bonjour. Everybody, uh, I went. I was going to uh, say Bon Jovi. <laughs> bon Jovi. <laughs> bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Everyone. Oh, Bon Jovi. Oh, oh, oh. oh back at Jovi. Uh, uh, oh. I just want to let you know it's really late. It's ten o'clock here oh. at night. I'm super tired from uh, uh, walking around. Uh, laughs and as. Laughs and as. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say shit now because I'm an hour later. So, uh, just watch around. me. Just fucking watch me. <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh -oh. I know. Oh, I know. Hi. Hey, uh, I had, I've had a good time. Oh, and I knew I guess I had time for our guest to show up. Hey. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, you've already heard about our meetups and the trips. Thanks, everybody, for showing up to the meetup. I'm in France. It's great. Let's get on with the fucking show. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Gary. Friday night tights. Let's go. Yes, I'm here. I'm not too good for Friday night tights. As is, but I'm not. Let's go. I love that. Uh, now the biggest star of Friday night tights. Uh, as heel versus baby face. <laughs> celebrity. <laughs> celebrity. <laughs> The most famous person on Friday Night Tights. <laughs> Wait, I'll give you some more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> give you some more. I got to I got to meet this man in person, and it was the it was it was magical. It was the moment of my life. Uh, I heard you guys got married. Yeah, well, I mean, I could imagine it was wow. getting married and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, the 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 uh, the strength at which Gary hugged is 
I think I might have got pregnant, never mind married. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations. congratulations. I reacted that. I reacted to your to your marriage video on Cobracast and well, me and the not. entire chat we, we determined that as was the dominant one in that Which is so not true because old he was just, skipping over me the whole agreed. time. Old Chad agreed they're like as is taking control of that really <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what can I say, you ladies? Boss. You know. <laughs> uh, no, it's been it's been a it's been a heck of a week. Uh, obviously, <laughs> met, met Gary Monday, and uh, by Tuesday, I was sick as a parrot. <laughs> uh, wow! By Wednesday, I was bedridden. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's some really rough morning sickness you got. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, it's fast acting. Uh, Gary, what did you do to him? Seriously, oh, well, what you, would you, you like to know? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, right? AIDS is a problem that can be transmitted. Um, actually, I'll stop right there. <laughs> Damn, Gary, or maybe the question is, what didn't you do to him? Well, that's uh, a question. Uh, um, yeah, th Thursday, uh, pretty much the same. So I'm I'm actually on limited time today. I'm probably only going to be here for an hour or so and then climb back into uh, into bed. But um, uh, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever it is I've got, I'd just like to thank QBG for giving it to me. That's that's. <laughs> You're welcome. That's You're welcome. I, wa I wanted to be like the real best man. Tweet. Came oh, in that, here that, and I wanted uh, to give you the the virus before dude, Gary got I, I there. I nearly died laughing at the tweet that you put up of uh, <laughs> Tom just like <laughs> backing, him, backing himself out of the room. Gave Gary the coup. Gave you think us gave the you, flu. It's just like <laughs> did he give you his uh his quarter black germs. Oh yeah, sickle yeah, cell. I mean, uh, uh, everyone's got sickle cell now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the sugar foot. You gotta watch out for that. Yeah, well, I, I I went to the doctors and somehow I managed to get myself hepatitis B. I mean, how how did that happen, KBG? They I made a know. new virus. Well, no, they do. Seems like, crazy. Seems like Gary. Seems like Gary took that personal. And everybody's saying that uh, As was the dominant when he took it out on As that night. <laughs> 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 I'll show you the dominant one it is. Right. So you. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it could be worse. He could have given out this. By the way, it was it was uh, it was so. I, I'm so annoyed. Legiano, oh God, just a moment of sincerity before we talk about dicks and fucking shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sincerity, that's what I heard. Yeah, I, was, I was I was so mortified by getting ill on Tuesday. Um, I could barely function on Tuesday. My head was just all over the place. And so I didn't get to give Gary the uh, the goodbye, uh, the proper goodbye, because we thought we were gonna hopefully meet up for breakfast the next morning uh, before he uh, before he departed. So but... <laughs> sounding so gay, a, a proper British goodbye. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the show we took together. <laughs> I like how what, he's, what's a proper like how... British goodbye? Is that like you both just masturbate, look in each other's eyes, like what the fuck? There you go. <laughs> He's like, a moment of sincerity, please. Big tits, fucking wobbly cocks. There you go. Next. He stops, he stops all the, the, the talk about dicks and gay jokes to say, before the dicks and gay jokes start, I'm going to make a very gay assumption that I didn't give Gary a proper goodbye after a magical day together. <laughs> nothing, nothing says you were a man. Nothing says you respect a man than cleared in his bum hole with some soap in the shower. <laughs> while, while looking him directly in the eye, it's Ryan. Uh... Listen, I knew, I, I knew it was bad when he said, I didn't give Gary a proper goodbye, and Odin's the one who went, What? What do you mean by that, sir? Oh, by the, by the way, welcome back, Drew. Hopefully, you can stay longer than five minutes. You know what I was going to say is, I don't understand why you guys get so attacked. <laughs> 
I mean, every time I come on the show, it starts off with tons of homoerotic vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ryan's in the corner, like trying to act like he doesn't like it. And then Gary's like, oh, I guess this is what we're going to do. <laughs> we're, at, we're at lunch on the we're at tea on the first day that gary was here and melissa just says that and i was just like oh god you know you, you know when there's a bromance going on when i feel like the third wheel in this <laughs> 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 It's the old tea and crumpets, eh? Uh, <laughs> uh, is, Melissa could protest as much as we want. We weren't going to stop holding hands. No. <laughs> you remember 20 minutes ago when we were trying to get through intros fast? Oh. <laughs> no, I'm here for an hour. I'm taking advantage of every second of it. Got to give the big star a spotlight. So there you go. Oh, yeah. and, that, and that man's a cuck. Just uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Hey, shout out to that dislike the ratio. It's not it's not ratio, but that's a pretty impressive there act, man. Pretty impressive that video you made. Um, that was a really nice uh, dislike uh, amount that I saw on that video. So impressive, sir. Impressive. It's just a bunch of was bigots, it his though. apology video or was it something else? That's the one he made where he basically went after as oh, and, yeah. and lied Got about it. everything and lied about the fact that pronouns aren't forced in the video game when they literally are. Um, and yeah I, I did a reaction to it so good stuff the, the funny thing was is he i believe he put in the comments that we were potentially talking or gonna talk behind the scenes yeah he said that in yeah, the comment yeah in the comment yeah uh so this has been going on for a few days a bit of back and forth in, in, into you know what about what about potentially having a chat and the last the last like group of messages from him were just like bro i just want you know bro Anything that happens to your channel, like you get like demonetized. Like I, I've totally got your bat, bro. I'm like totally there for you, bro. You need something, bro. I'm absolutely there for you, bro. Okay, I really, I really appreciate you coming out like and buying for people like me, bro. I really do, bro. By the way, I just made a video shitting all over you. Hope you're okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Class act, man. <laughs> Hey, dude. You know, I watched that live as I, uh, I woke up in the morning and then I hear you screaming. Uh, it downstairs in my living. All I hear is effing pronouns. <laughs> I come down. I'm like, what are you watching? I'm asking my wife. He loves you guys, and she's like, he hates it. It's just nothing. You know, more gay stuff. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be. This is gonna get. Flipped. <laughs> this is gonna get flipped. That was a good one, though. Uh, that That's gonna go down in history. No lie. Yes. Yes. Yep. It was they got awesome. by Dan Task. Yep. Nothing Damn. tells you it doesn't matter than two weeks fucking later, more videos coming out. Yeah. And still yeah. counting. Still half. Yeah. Mm. What, what day are we out of it not mattering? 16? 17? Uh, day 15. This is day 15 of not mattering. Yeah. Yeah. If it, if it didn't matter, Nexus mods wouldn't have banned all those mods that were right. the pronoun stuff. So, yeah, it, it's it's not a big deal, right, guys? Not yeah, a big deal. Big deal at all. Yeah. Just overreaction, bro. Who cares? Who cares, bro? Totally overreacting. Pronouns, bro. Speaking of overreacting, hi Ryan. How you doing? Hi. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, there's been, even though it doesn't seem like a ton's going on in Hollywood, I feel like there's been a lot of random stories over the past couple of days, including, you know, Jonathan Major's be best acting performance we've seen yet <laughs> on the streets of Hollywood, just having to break up a high school girls' fight. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, really? the, the, day, yeah. the day yeah. before his trial started <laughs> hmm. in, uh, in, in New York. It's weird how that works. Wait a minute. Is there video of this? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 What? Have you not seen this? You haven't seen Probably it yet? Coincidental. Oh, I haven't seen it either. I'm I don't find it. Friend. Let Holy me, shit. I, I it. anniversary. Okay. I must, Ryan, you got make, it? Sure, okay. make sure you pull the one up with the memes, too, so you can yeah, show the memes. Because this is fantastic. <laughs> the memes, as most things on the internet, are the best things about this story. Um and they are very on point. So yeah, um, for his trial, that's some bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. His PR yeah, agent right, was yeah. like, "Let's get some at, teenagers at, to at, go at it." Like yeah, I, here said, you go. Though, I don't think. Oh. I don't think. Like two raptors. I don't, it, I, don't, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair. We got to be responsible. I don't think it's fair to just assume this is fake. It's it, you know like what you next thing you're telling me some guy's going to be in chicago at you know subway 2 a.m <laughs> and he's gonna country? make up a story about a couple yeah. of maga people to like that's just never happened so there's no way this is a fake story this is legitimately happening oh! here we go <laughs> just, so, just to get a little taste <laughs> what the fuck? all right ready <laughs> they're fighting they're going at it they're right? actually yeah i heard some hits 
Oh There's God. one really good one. <laughs> yeah. Right? So this is just like kind of whatever. Wait. There's one good one right oh. here. Oh! Yeah. Hey! Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I need a hero. In comes Kang. This is the hero <laughs> variant. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it, there's some good memes, though. It says. One, he's like saying you hit like a fucking girl. Okay. You gotta, <laughs> let, me, let me show you how it's done. Yeah, those, those hammer yeah, strikes done. are not committed. Yeah. You and the fat fuck on the well, side is filming with a Chromebook. <laughs> 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 Oh my God. <laughs> Let me get my laptop out. Can we, can we get a, Let me get my laptop out. Can, can we get a wide shot of the boom mic and the lights? <laughs> <in the studio? laughs> um. <laughs> wow. Show the memes, what? Ryan. <laughs> Show the memes. But yeah, so, uh, Cord, like, if you scroll through that a little bit, just scroll down in the comments. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and you're yeah. going to see. Mm -hmm. just oh, yeah, man. Okay. Yeah. Let me zoom and, and, in uh, a little it's bit. Great. It's great. I will say it's, it's a genius move by the PR team that if now I Google Jonathan Majors beats up girl, like, this is probably going to come up. Fucking real, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, those Mexican aliens are more real than that was. All right. <laughs> the chiclet aliens. I mean, it, 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 time. who has time to bust out the Chromebook like that? Uh oh. Who has time to do that? Fs in the chat. What's going on? Fs in the chat. Uh -oh. Fs in the Loading chat. There. Seems fine to me. Um, this bot, it, yeah, it looks okay to me. Maybe it's F's. Maybe it's F's for uh, no, people Jonathan like, Majors. Refresh. refresh. <laughs> yeah, if you can't hear us, just refresh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never went down on my side. Just mute. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't hear us, you're probably better off right now, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> oh my God, you are kidding me! I heard, I saw him trending on Twitter. I, I just thought there was some court appearance. I didn't check. Well, this, it was his court. His first official like court date, like the trial starting, is today. So this came out yesterday. Oh, that, oh. <laughs> very, very, just yeah, it's just a coincidence, guys. That just is coincidence. so lucky, man. It's certainly. I mean, listen, it could be. It could be that that just happened to happen, right? Who knows? But uh, turns out those students wild. are actually Nigerians, and they were hired. <laughs> now convenient. Yeah. I heard one of the students scream "Maga country." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that video, that video of those two brothers breaking down what happened and how Juicy Smollett, like, br you know, wanted everything to play out is one of the funniest videos I've ever seen on YouTube. That shit is <clears throat> classic. Yes. Good stuff. Well, that's great. You know, everything's so authentic out of Hollywood. Uh, I think we're terrible people for not thinking that's real. Uh, yes. Awful, yes. awful people. Hi, Chrissy. Hi. It's so great to actually be here and be remembered. <laughs> I remembered you, Real, Chrissy. Okay, I just Real didn't tell anybody. The show, we're like in the middle of talking about some retarded Lucas film thing, and Gary's like, Where's, where's, where's Christy at? Where's Christy? <laughs> she sounded a little mad about that, didn't she? No, no. <laughs> she did. I'm, not, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. It's good to be Three here. Hours into a fucking <laughs> <laughs> it's a really funny clip. It's like a Joe Biden moment. It's like, where am I? Aww. Hey, I've done more. Well, maybe I haven't done more drugs than Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Definitely uh, Hunter. Uh, I'm glad yes. you're back, Chrissy. Uh, glad to be back. I feel like there's so much to catch up on. Like I'm, I'm just now catching up on the on the deal with Az. As mad at some video game. It's but he went turbo viral. Uh, I it just, it was, I had a whirlwind week in LA, um, a little bit of a fight of my own a real fight broke out at one of our shows, but it was fun. I, I, I did, um, what's his face? Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla's show. I was on Jimmy Dora's show. Um, so it was a good week in LA. Congratulations. Yeah, That's a, talk, that was awesome. We, Except for the fight. Congratulations. <laughs> we need to talk about Grady. All right. <clears throat> our boy Grady. <clears throat> I know Grady. 
uh what the fuck were you doing dude okay just just here's some life lessons here if uh, you see a drugged out fentanyl zombie without a shirt on you don't <laughs> approach him and go cool down bro would you say cool down bro to a wild animal cornered you wouldn't no so you got to go in there knowing you're going to get clocked you are absolutely going to get clocked and that's why hi, hi twitter hi yeah. twitter <laughs> hello i didn't say it <laughs> hey, did not compare I, I him to an animal say- Okay. I, I prefer to say basketball American. That's what I've been saying on all my interviews. Yeah. I didn't say anything. Hey, any shirtless fentanyl zombie, I don't care what they look at, you don't freaking run up to them and go, cool down, bro, because you're going to With your arms out? Yeah. Like it was. Yeah, was yeah. And yeah. dude, take off your glasses. Do not keep your glasses. As somebody who wears glasses, you ever get punched in the face with glasses? It fucking hurts twice as much. Take your glasses off. Don't be a nerd, dude, okay? All right. To be fair, like, not everybody's been in those situations before. No. Really Not understands. Not everyone's been to prison. Not everyone's yeah, been yeah. Okay. Well, then that's why you should listen to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even more. Lesson learned. I know from experience. It was coming from a very good place. He didn't want this guy to run up on me on the stage. He didn't want him to like attack me or any of the other girls. Like it did. It, it was coming from a very nice chivalrous place, which I it appreciate. Was. And, and he could have died. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he hit the yeah, he hit the yeah. concrete hard too. Yeah. Like that could have been yeah, really I, really bad. I don't know the guy obviously, but uh, obviously you know he's friends with, with you guys, and so uh, obviously a good dude. I saw like ABL uh, was go was going off on Twitter about this stuff, but like all of his points were valid. Like it's about like you put yourself in that situation, you could literally end up dead if you yeah. you know like and that's just, that guy. That guy looked crazy. Uh, he was fucking nuts. Yeah. Just wanting to do poetry was like, oh, this guy's out of his mind. You know, yeah. who, who's doing poetry <laughs> in 2023? I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Uh, I, 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 look, man, I always try to, I try to keep my, just me personally. I keep myself out of any situation I can't at least somewhat control, you know? Um, you know, I don't, uh, I don't go to like, clubs i don't go to you know bars crazy shit happens at these places unless it's like a controlled situation like it's just not my cup of tea because 10 crazy things tends to happen in those scenarios and that one if i'm there like unless someone yeah unless someone if he's going after someone that needs to be protected in that scenario i'd probably get involved but just to try to calm him down yeah that was no that that's was, up to the that place was the that was hosting that. chrissy their security should have handled it yeah Period. Um, been nice. yeah. Got a sweet uh, bruise though. Look pretty cool. Oh, yeah, there's a yeah. lot. Of, there's a lot of and veterans and, and police, o- former police officers that would love to be hired as a security. It'd be yeah. nice if we could yeah. uh, employ all of and, those around the country and they could take care of the bad guys. Good. Yeah. And yeah. Done is yeah there than was. A bad guy. There was a. I think another FNT fan in the crowd, and he. You could tell he was former something because he knew the code for whatever he was. He's like, oh, that's a fifty-one forty. That's a fucking crazy dude. That's a. <laughs> he like knew the code. <laughs> I was like, 50, I was like that, that, that's a 1350 there. Uh, I think yeah. that's uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a that's a, that's a 1350 running up to the 34 double D. Let's get it. Yeah, 199. We got a we got a 199. In, in wrestling well, terms, just to throw out that big X right there. This is a real it, situation. Well, it does come down to like it. It, it ultimately does come down like our like going back to like when the Orlando event. You know, when we did the Orlando meetup. I spent a lot of money on security, undercover and public security, you know, police officers. The the place had their own security, but I'm like, I would rather be a lot like all it takes is one crazy person to fuck yep. everything up. So oh, yeah. spend a little bit of extra money. So having undercover people there and having uh, a cop parked out front plus the security um, that you know that was already you know provided by the venue i, I thought that we were in pretty good shape there um and it's so. not just for you yeah, that was it's not just for man. the creators that have mm-hmm. those events it's for the mm-hmm. people that come to them to keep them safe and make sure that they have that peace of mind that they're not just going to an event that has no security at all mm-hmm. and also there's some of us you know even on the panel that haven't had our second amendment rights stripped away like gary has <clears throat> yeah. um, chances <laughs> are some of us are actually using that at any meetup we go to in case yeah i can has yes. promise ideas. yes i can yeah. promise you that we are i'm again we, we're fully prepared at all of our meetups uh we got people everywhere because all it takes is one crazy person and we've got people that can de-escalate any situation yeah. fairly quickly for the most part because there's a lot of crazy people out there there's a lot yep. of them at the UK meetup, we had drunk soccer fans, so we were good. 
Well, I mean, well, we know that they don't have guns. So. I, came, I came prepared. I was armed. Armored. I said soccer oh. UK. You heard me. Armored. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Man, you're gonna have soccer hooligans show up to your hotel next time you're in the UK. No, no. You know what we had? We had a fully armored shad. That's what we had. Right. What's up, shad? Dual wielding. Bring a can opener. Dude, I'm going great. I had a great day at the Lotus Eaters, and this week has been wild. You know, getting soft cancelled by a former colleague, but uh, everything oh. else has been been not going. Really, really cool. The Europe has been great. I don't know, obviously. Let's say that's great. Uh, uh, is that, uh, who else is going to get canceled right now? So we ha- we went from uh, what Chrissy <laughs> piss- pissing off a couple of countries, uh, and as, then uh, Ryan, uh, of course, and then just another one for me. Huh? <laughs> it's another one for you, me. Then as uh, Shad, so comics quarterback Odin. You guys uh, been pretty good. good. Take, take your pick. Yeah. Gotta be a little more spicy, I guess. Hey, I, yeah. I'm just yeah. a racist Trump supporter, so I'm covered, man. I'm good. I'm the <laughs> least controversial person here. <laughs> of course, we'll say, you know, same experience uh, as as the fellowship just comes with lock shields ready for support. I'd really appreciate Brian. everyone who, who, who's there to oh, back yeah. me up. Yeah. The fellowship just comes. Comes, man. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't stay on stop going. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, why do you have to make everything so gay? Why oh, I do <laughs> hey, they don't know gay about yeah, coming. This, this sounds like you're protecting here. You're, you're wanting to, you're, just we know that they got our back. It. All right. So it reminds me just the other day, look at this. Uh, a quarterback from Iowa is doing a press conference. This is like the funniest shit ever. You know, a level of communication up front and me with me, the backs, and, you know, really everyone just being on the same page because we know these guys are going to come uh, <laughs> a lot. I mean, there's. <laughs> <laughs> I like whoever this guy is. All right, he that, knows. That's a kid right there. That's a kid who understood. That's hilarious. Oh, that's so all that's getting flipped. <laughs> uh, he owns it. That's cool. Hey, what was He's the like, Just gotta make sure we got our backs and our he, rears. He was probably talking about the defense. Hey, we gotta be ready for that. These guys. They're gonna, they're gonna, gonna come. They're gonna come, come hard. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> They keep oh. pounding and pounding. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know, coming after they the ball. just won't stop. That's the and Carolina Panthers. Like Carolina Panthers had like a saying, like keep pounding or something. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. Uh, football is pretty gay. So, uh, yes, it is. Thanks for being here, Shad. Uh, hello, Odin. What's up? I'm on time. Hey. I know. So weird. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, wife yeah. just uh, started uh, maternity leave. We're prepping. Uh, for baby girl to get here. So right now things Aww. are scheduled for next week. So this will probably be my last FNT for a little bit as we are going to have a uh, baby girl next week. So is it gonna be Odin, a female are, you, are you sure it's a girl? Have you asked it? I, I just, I just want to point this out that Odin is the first person <laughs> to have a daughter ever. So congratulations. Yes, first person ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big achievement and uh, congrats. I don't take yes. it lightly. Yes. Thank it's going to be very expensive. They're definitely more expensive than boys. This yes. is true. Especially when they get older. Did you Especially know that one hundred percent of babies that are ever born, human babies, were from females? What? Hey, what? Did you, you can't that say that bigoted shit. All children wow. are either male or female. Did you know that? It's a vow. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's leave the hot takes for your. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're building artificial wounds now, where that's no longer going to be the case. So, uh, there are uh, two genders. You're boring. <laughs> well, everything else they're doing is artificial, so they might as well. Hey, Jeremy, if you want to get canceled, just get Dan Vass to start clipping your Cobra cast, yeah, dude. I know, I know. I, I, listen, I'm not an ally of the LGBTQ plus Brazilian community like you guys are. So shout out to Dan Vask. Hey, uh, Dan Vask was awesome in One Piece, though. He was really good as Luffy. So yeah, well, I just want I want Dan Vass to send me a super chat that I don't have to pay for. You know, like. <laughs> I have to pay in money every time Dan Vass sends a fucking screw because this currency is such dog shit. Yeah, That's we get how bills bad from this bill. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous, man. It's stupid. <laughs> Exchange rate is brutal. Uh, hi, quarter black. Hey, Sorry what's up? Uh, yeah, you know, wife just took a arrow to the knee, couldn't adventure anymore. Been taking oh. care of the kids. It's pretty brutal. I don't know how to do it. I need help. Uh, but <laughs> I'm here. I'm on time. I didn't uh, show up halfway through the show. I'm sorry, Odin. 
I didn't see you there. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Ooh. Shots fired. I love you, bro. I love you. I'm ready to do the show. Let's go. Let's do it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's all right. It's fine. I'm not crying inside at all. It's fine. It's like after, after you have the second one, you realize they just fucking take care of themselves. Yeah. I got I mean? three of them taking care of the last one. So. Exactly. We're you guys put baby Thor in the backyard. Be like, go play. All right. Yeah. Get in the dirt. In the backyard, but in a fucking pen. They sell cages for children. Yeah. Right? Brian's I have a fence backyard, so it's like a cage. Leash. Hey, comics. Uh, read 1984 lately? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I read it and reread it again, and I moved on to Fahrenheit 451. So, uh, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. We should so, all read get, that. Get, get all those dystopian books in. Yeah. The yeah, I was going to say, the Fahrenheit 451, that's like the... Never mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, glad you're enjoying your European vacation. It sounds like it's a lot of fun. And uh, we have uh, the guy who made a video about me, uh, Taco, about talking about Blue oh, Beetle yeah. and tacos. Uh, Drew Hernandez, what's up, man? <laughs> what's up? Thanks for amplifying my career. Nobody knew who I was until you guys made that video, so I appreciate it. <laughs> And, Looks uh, like you've laid off the tamales. Since <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I've decided to adopt white supremacy and start working out. It's changed my life. Oh my <laughs> god! Everyone should do that. Adopt white supremacy. Start working out. You'll be a better person. I promise. You. There you go. <laughs> That's why Ryan's in such good shape. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he, can eat, he eats Taco Bell all day, and you uh, can't even yeah, tell. Yeah, you can't tell at all. All right. So uh, guess what um, California did, guys? They're going to bail out the fucking striking writers and actors because when you wow. choose not to work, you deserve unemployment. Right. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Wow. Especially when you're mostly contract workers and you didn't even fucking pay into it uh, as much, you know, because the business well, that's is even worse. It. It's even worse. Uh, it's running it, it, as it, intended. It's uh, it, it was passed by the Senate. And we, I said this was going to happen. Uh, I said this was going to happen. So the Film Actors Guild and the Writers Guild voluntarily go on strike and you get to pay for it, despite the fact that, you know, that you lost your house, you lost your business, you lost uh, your fucking job, uh, you had to move out or you were forced out of the home you owned into a rental. But, uh, you know, some jackass who wrote fucking She-Hulk is now going to get more money from unemployment that they got from the residuals from the actual series that they don't fucking uh, deserve. How you know the ocean really needs to reclaim California at this point? Fucking well, you know what? You, you can't get mad at the Senate now. You can't get mad at fucking Gavin Newsom. These these you know what these people are? They're fucking snakes. It's a super majority. You now have to wonder. Well, you had a chance to recall Gavin Newsom and you didn't, and you keep voting these people in because you're scared of Republicans or your fucking white guilt. I don't give a fuck what it is. People should be pissed, fucking pissed that San Francisco and LA are fucking ruling your entire lives. And now your fucking money is going to go to these fuckers who write pretend badly. Like at least if it was good, that might be something, but it's such shit. It's divisive shit. That's divided our country. This should enrage people. And right now, you just need to get the fuck out. Like, there's no option for you. California, this is the Not way it's change. going to be. It's a super majority. They were allowed to change the dis uh, jurisdictions or, or the districts. And uh, people just sat back and let it happen. They let it happen because they were convinced, oh, my God, the Republicans are so evil. Larry Elder will come in and destroy the state. Your state's fucking destroyed. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much ruined already. Yeah, and now it's yeah, gonna I mean, go to other fucking states. Yeah, there's just no, there's no saving California, and I mean, I guess like it's hard because you got people that, that have, have have ties there, they have family, they have friends, they have their whole livelihood, but at some point, like, you got to make a decision, like Gary did, you know, like it's just it is broken, and it is it's hard to to process how bad it is there, but it's never gonna change, and it's only going to continue to get worse. Um, I and they hate they hate your guts as an individual they hate you and they're going to use you for everything you you have 
And now they're taking your tax money. The the very same people that while your business was shut down, while you lost your job during COVID, while you didn't have access to some of these benefits because they cut them off, these are the people that said, just power through. We're all in this together. While they continued to work, they got authorization to work when nobody else was able to in commie right. California. And now that they are voluntarily choosing not to work, which is what a strike is, by the way, they now want your fucking tax dollars. That's how egregious this is. Yeah, well, the, this is the one thing that they were talking about was like wanting job security. And, and that's kind of the big issue. You work for a living. It's not guaranteed. Right. And that's the reality that these people need to come to terms with is that you are not guaranteed anything. You need to work for what you have. And one, one good way to get job security is to stop putting out shitty products. That yeah, yeah, there's that too. Well, <laughs> well, the Hollywood writers, they don't want to work for what they have. Have you fucking seen the shit they put out? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's why I it's have. taken so long to come back to the table and actually get this resolved because they make shit products and they're asking for money. It's not going to happen. Well, the, the funny thing too, it, like any other industry, if you do a shitty job at your job, you're going to get fired. And this is something that these people don't, not in communist California. Of. Yeah, not, not nope. in communist California. We, we, want, we want guarantees for a paycheck, and that's not reality. And it's not even like this is a job where like, this would be something that, like, oh, you have no other options. Like, no, you're, you're someone that trained and chose this, like, completely, 100% your choice to enter into this industry. And so you take full ownership of the fact that, hey, projects start, they end, and then guess what? You got to find the next one. That That's how the whole nature. That's why I almost went into this and almost actually entered in as, like, a PA and tried to, like, work my way up. But I'm like, no guaranteed check okay i'm out i'm not gonna do that because hey i realize i need to have a consistent wage and that's not gonna provide for me well uh, you can't I retroactively whole, decide that you need a consistent wage it's yeah, exactly <laughs> Yeah, the whole the whole chat screaming about ads. So I don't yeah, know, but, that's a YouTube uh, change. They're YouTube they're forcing thing. ads now in live streams. It ads on uh, on YouTube then. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you recently over the weekend, I believe, uh, YouTube changed it so you can't manually decide well, where that's they go. To start November, so we must have clipped out or something for the ads. Oh, for it to like kick in. Yeah, go in the back and make sure that you can deselect that. Make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I don't know. Maybe we're because uh, we're running the stream through your computer right yeah but this okay. shouldn't be any different settings though. i use the same settings i'll check it though I'll check. well i didn't get an ad on my phone i'm watching the stream on my phone youtube always shit. likes to change that shit in the background yeah but, but yeah they, yep. they do we must yep. continue Premium. the show no matter Premium. what so as i was saying uh the the hollywood seems like it's run by a bunch of 25 year old fucking idiots who've never done anything they've come right out of fucking their liberal arts schools where they specialized in editing for like 10 weeks and listen to some failure editor teach them more failure and they they don't know what work is what hard work is but the thing the truth of the matter is no these are a bunch of fucking 50 60 year old adults making these decisions sounding like fucking children like they're entitled we we deserve a fair wage you know what you do if you do the work if you do the work and and the actors we saw um michelle and heard i think that's she's from picard season three talking about oh, eight thousand dollars a week eight thousand dollars a week is pretty fucking good uh yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> making that a month okay yeah, these writers uh, get paid a, a month. lot yeah, sorry yeah gary but yeah these writers get paid a lot of money and uh, uh, what i what i my impression what i get from when they're hearing them complain is just they're so damn entitled i mean mm. gosh makes you really disconnected yeah well the, the lack of i mean the lack of gratitude and the entitlement which is remember when they were saying the fans were entitled remember hearing that <laughs> <laughs> well, the fans who pay for shit were were entitled uh the access media pushed that too fuck you by the way uh yeah we're entitled to shit we pay for fuckers but you're entitled to jack swat you're not entitled to our fucking money but now i guess you are according to the state of california and this i mean Honestly, this is going to be such a bad look for them uh, outside of California. Inside of California, nobody's going to give a fuck. Nobody's going to care. And uh, this is, you know, it, and it sucks. I hate the black pill on California, but, you know, you got to cut your losses and go somewhere where you can win. And uh, until people, the people of California suffer enough, they got to hit bottom and they're not even close to it yet. So maybe all your cities need to turn into Detroit, you know, for you to change your mind. And by then it might be too late. Uh, California State Senate passes bill to give striking workers access to unemployment insurance. Now it's up to Gavin Newsom. Wonder what he's going to do. Uh, did you hear Gavin Newsom recently say that he might have done things differently during COVID? Did you see that article? No. 
Oh, Nobody saw wow, really? Mm. Yep, it's out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he should be so embarrassed to even mention that. Like, yes, <laughs> of course, you may have done a few things wrong, like the entire plan. A bill that would make striking workers in California eligible to receive up to 450 a week in unemployment oh. insurance. By the way, that's 450 more than they deserve. Uh, benefits passed in the state Senate on Thursday by a vote of 27 to 12. The state uh, Senate Bill 799, which passed in the state assembly last month, now heads to the desk of Governor Gavin Newsom, uh, California psycho himself, who can either sign it into law or veto it. His signature, however, is by no means certain. Last year, he vetoed 169 bills while signing nearly 1,000 in 2019, uh, and also keeping the COVID restrictions. Uh, when did he lift them? Two months ago? Three months ago? Not long ago. Uh, a similar bill failed in the Senate just two, uh, by just two votes. Uh, striking workers in New York and New Jersey are entitled to collect unemployment benefits after two weeks in the picket line, but those in California currently aren't eligible because they're considered to have left their jobs voluntarily, which is exactly what fucking happened. <laughs> That's in what New a York, strike it, is. It, it, I don't think <laughs> otherwise it's called yeah. getting fired. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Chrissy, how does it feel that New York, they're getting them? Uh, I, I I heard a, a comic that I used to know like actually bitching about Drew Barrymore mm -hmm. putting her show back on and now Bill Maher also like yeah. just I guess it's called scabbing or he just sounded like such a pussy and, and and the guy that was interviewing him for TMZ was like oh didn't you work for John Oliver he's like well I used to but now I'm just touring <laughs> doing comedy it's like you don't even work there anymore. Mm -hmm. But they love to get on their high horse and uh, and preach about it. Drew Barrymore well, just kicked you. out two people in their in her audience because they were wearing pins for WGA. Well, to, oh. to be fair, I don't think that Drew Barrymore well, her, was like, get her, these motherfuckers. her staff I think her, like, her security. I think her yeah, security yeah. saw them and like was like, okay, these guys are wearing like WGA shit on the right. same time the WGA is threatening to picket and all this mm -hmm. shit when that all went down and so they told them not to. It I would to too. I, I would be expecting them to try and do some kind of stunt. So they asked him to leave. Drew well, Barrymore the, the posted a big is, apology today. Like, yeah, I apologize did. to writers. Mm -hmm. I apologize to, you know, the unions. I don't even, I don't even really know what to say other than I'm just so sorry. Yeah, yeah no, this well, the, the does really piss me off Mar, so much. Mar's show back when the, the 2007 strike was going on didn't go on hiatus. So this honestly is nothing new. The only reason why he was on hi hiatus is because they do it like a season. So this is when the show should be coming back. And nobody complained back in 2007, but now they're complaining. This pisses me off so much because I lost my job in media December of 21. I got fired for not taking the vax so I couldn't come back into the building to work even though I was working remotely. No problem for two fucking years. Uh, and I was forbidden from collecting unemployment because they considered it voluntary uh wow. leaving basically yeah. and i could not collect unemployment i had no health insurance fuck me and, and it's because guys, you're not part of the club yeah these guys some yeah. of them have been out of work for a minute <laughs> and they get unemployment i think if you had taken the vax there's a very good chance that you might have been voluntarily leaving life <laughs> true <laughs> that's true uh so the WGA West President Meredith Whatever and the Film Actors Guild Secretary Treasurer Jolie Fisher both testified in Sacramento last month in favor of the bill. The WGA has been on strike since May 2nd, and uh, we don't have a, a fucking chance in hell of any th this uh, ending soon. So we need government money mm. because we left work. Fuck you. God, I'm so pissed about <laughs> this, man. Uh, the UI system was intended to provide a temporary safety net for workers. Okay, workers. Uh, in the beginning of my video, you know one of these striking workers is a background actor who already has a nine-to-five job. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we showed some of her work. Sorry to pick on her, but that's life. Uh, you put yourself out there, that's that's just part of it. Um, so I'm not sorry to pick on her, to be honest with you. Um, and th this, this is what most of these workers are, is they're background workers, they're part-time workers. Uh, we talked about, I think his name was David Bach, who was an actor who didn't get any work because he wasn't good enough. And instead of, I don't know, getting a side gig, getting a side hustle, getting a fucking permanent job, he did some gardening in his rent controlled apartment. 
rent control department oh. that he couldn't fucking afford uh, to, to get some time off the rent and he still couldn't get it. So he had to ask for help for one. The union should be taking care of these people. That's their fucking job. You sign, you pay your dues in. What, what are you getting out of it? Oh, I'm, I know what you're getting. Nothing. You're getting fucking nothing. So now we have to cover a fucking union. You can, you have to understand Hollywood. This is why people are resentful towards you aside from alienating half of the country and dividing the country. Now you want us to pay for your gig. Get fucked. Get fucked. Fall apart. And that's what's going to happen, by the way. No matter what happens, when this fucking strike is over and it will end, they will get a deal. They'll probably get a pretty good one, but it's only going to be for about a quarter of you. The rest of you are done. And you deserve to be gone because you're not good enough. This is a specialized industry. You know, you're not making widgets. You're not uh, on the assembly line. You're not in a fucking coal mine in Pennsylvania in the 1800s. You know, it's fucking Hollywood. Shit. Uh, the UI system, blah, blah, blah. Actors Equity joined the chorus applauding the bill's passage and urged Governor Newsom to sign it into law as soon as possible. And what Gavin will do is he'll put well, he'll do what he always does. He'll take an internal poll. He'll put his finger and see which wind, wind uh, which way the wind is blowing. And then he'll decide on that. The guy's got no gut instinct. He's got no gut. He's a slimy fucking politician. As workers continue to stand in solidarity to win better, fairer contracts, this measure will aid everyone who needs to pay bills and buy groceries. Oh, it, it, no. The rest of it is just basically propaganda from the the, <laughs> the unions. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's where some of that money is probably going to go. Probably going to go into his pocket. Well, that's all that we've been getting through deadline. Uh, good point, Ryan. Uh, through uh, you know Hollywood Reporter deadline, it's been nothing but union propaganda. And I I don't give a fuck about the producers; they're scum too. But uh, we're just hearing one side of this, and the other side we're not hearing is there's no money. There's no money. I you, I think the thing that we got to realize here is that 12 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, this would have been a far bigger deal than it is now. Nobody fucking cares about nobody Hollywood, cares. the internet, mm -hmm. YouTube, independent people. There's so much more that are keeping people's attention that they don't miss what's going on. Sure, there's some good stuff. I've enjoyed quite a few movies over the past several years, far more than I was, uh, you know, just, you know, three, four, five years ago. But it doesn't matter. Like, okay, I don't have a, a good movie every couple of months to check out. I've got the internet. I've got YouTube. I've got video games. I've got whatever. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. And that's their, their importance is dwindling. And this is a sign of the dwindling that no one misses you. No one misses you, Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel. And no one misses <laughs> all shit. No one cares uh, because there's so much more to keep our attention. And that's just where we're at. That's the big difference. It's also the backlash. Hollywood has been desensitizing and, and basically alienating majority normal people for years. Like you look at the, you know, how many people are tuning into Golden Globes and Emmys and stuff like that. And then you see these out of touch celebrities trying to both lecture, you know, the common public, but also try and pretend that they're one of them. And they do those cringe, like <laughs> that music thing where, where they oh, we're all together and they just come off so absolutely disconnected where the, the mask is off. People see how fake these people are. The whole industry is. And so now when we see the industry crumbling, crumbling most people are like, yep, good. Not going to miss you, basically. Well, we, so we've seen the friends, we've seen the slow creep ask for help. That's what that's what's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, these listen, these the whole ESG BlackRock Vanguard at the top. That's where this is all always coming from. Right. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, with corporate America and all the politicians, they're bound down to these foreign entities. So when you see all this roll out with all the communism, all the retards are leaving the indoctrination camps out of the universities, flooding Disney and all these corporate America monoliths, you're going to start to see this. But what's interesting is. When you have a society that doesn't live in reality and they're told not to live in reality, that's where you get the whole participation trophy culture. That's what we live in right now. Well, you don't have to have any merit. You don't have to have any talent. You just need to be black. You need to be a POC and you're going to get the job mm. over the white person that's better than you. There is no equality. It's not real. We're all talented differently. Some people are better than the other. That's just 100% true. That is reality. People don't want to accept that, but that's why you're seeing this right now in Hollywood because you got a bunch of people that are bound by ESG and these gigantic foreign entities, and then you get all the useful idiots at the bottom that continue to push this, and now they all are expecting because they're hitting reality. They're all, they're all expecting everyone that they hate on through all the content that we love, that they've destroyed, that they've decimated. 
okay? That everything that we've ever loved these past 10, 20, 30, however long you've been alive that's been changed and decimated and destroyed, they've destroyed it intentionally with an F you right to your face and spit in your face and pissed on the grave. And now they're asking for your help. What the hell do you think is going to happen? Reality is you're and not going to get a damn help. You're not going to get anybody's help. These yeah. people are garbage. No one's going to help them. No one's going to care about them, especially right now in your time of need. That's just how humanity works, but these people do not live in reality, so they can't accept reality. So when reality hits them in the face, they're just sitting there wondering what the hell's going on with their lives. And you, pair that, the, you pair that with the fact that <laughs> Hollywood has been scared shitless to make a good comedy, really, for the last 10 years. Yeah. I mean, think think yeah. back to the, the 2010s, the Hangover era, Bridesmaids, all the comedy movies that were coming out. There, you know, various producers have said over the years, like they are petrified. They it might have been Adam Devine or somebody was like, they will not make a comedy. They are that scared of getting canceled or blowback, and that's a huge part of the market. Yeah, and, the, and that's the huge problem too with this whole punching up, punching down nonsense. The whole idea of a comedy is you're going to make fun of somebody, and you can't do that anymore because everyone's become so fucking sensitive. Oh, yeah, Todd Phillips is the one who came out and said that. He said like, I, oh, yeah. I can't make, I can't make comedies anymore uh and it and, and as comedy goes hollywood goes entertainment goes yeah it's a great barometer of it and uh if they're afraid to do that that means they're afraid to create they're afraid to do anything interesting and that's why we rarely get something and when they accidentally get into something or you know like we're going to talk about one piece in a second which is fucking brilliant you know yeah, it's 100 it, will they learn a fucking thing from it i hope so but i doubt it I highly doubt it. We've had good things before and they, they learned all the wrong lessons from it. So <clears throat> if the, uh, when the WGA and the film actors guild uh, come back, uh, they're going to come back the same way and, and they're not going to learn any lessons. You know, they should have handled this before COVID when they had a lot more leverage, by the way, but they were so fucking scared. They were so scared. They, uh, and I talked to the uh, WGA negotiator about this. They basically kicked the can down the road because they got what he said was such a sweet deal now maybe you should be wondering at this point why you had such a sweet deal back then because they knew this was coming they absolutely knew this was coming and now it's here you're in this major paradigm shift and what digitizing your industry does it devalues it and it's happened to and i've talked about this before it's happened to comics it's happened to publishing it's happened to music it and they just weren't prepared for it so it's going to shrink it's going to shrink as video games continue to destroy you and the American comic book industry gets destroyed by manga. Uh, we're, we're these companies are going to outsource. You're good. What you're going to see is more uh, companies gobbling up other companies. So Hollywood is going to shrink and they're going to start outsourcing and you're going to start seeing more entertainment from uh, other countries. It's going to be a lot cheaper and it's going to be a lot better. You know, uh, the, the, there's a reason manga is is a better storytelling more popular storytelling because they're not fall and and there's tons of genres within manga but for the most part they stay away from this shit because it's produced by an ethno state you know that's just something people don't want to talk about uh, why is japan so safe i don't know <laughs> on, on a complete I don't on a completely know. truly completely yeah. separate uh, unrelated topic uh how much immigration does Japan have? I'm just interested. I like this. Is, I have a question. Just, just it's pretty just, low. Very, yeah, very, 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 low. very, low. very low. What we're yeah. seeing, I think, what I think we're seeing is for a long time, the internet has been building and we all talk about this. Like you just said, they're, they're fighting in a digital age against something like YouTube where there's thousands upon thousands and millions of hours uploaded every second right they can't compete with that so we're seeing uh our our medium that's built in the digital age grow while theirs is shrinking and they just can't handle it and they don't know how to navigate that and they still want to be as important as they were in the last decade or the decade before that but they just aren't going to be well, and so eventually they'll figure it out it's cheaper to produce content and people get it for free granted they have to watch a few ads now and then but it doesn't yeah. cost them anything. But it's All built it in. Is their computer and their internet connection, and you're good to go. You expect to see some ads on on YouTube, right? Not yeah. maybe not too many, but you expect to see some. But when you're watching a movie, you don't expect to see that. And when you're told, "I have a streaming service that you can just watch movies at your will," and you pay for it, and then you start seeing ads 
mixed in with that, people are not going to handle that very well. Well, they realize that basically the viability of streaming, you need ads. You can't just charge people a right. set amount and expect it to work. They, they are losing so much money by not going the ad route. Their medium well, does not work in our medium, and our medium is the one that's yeah. taking and over. And it's, and it's, uh, it's just not going to work. You know, uh, yeah. Ryan has brought it up. They've 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 introduced the ad tiers, and nobody's buying them, so they're eventually going to force them on us. Yes, uh, that, uh, yeah. Disney's Disney's giving them away for a dollar ninety nine per month. Why ninety nine per month? They're trying to get people to sign up for <laughs> Disney Plus for three oh. months. Oh. With they, got, they desperately got to boost those subs right now. Uh, Ryan, I went to uh, I have my my other phone. I didn't have Netflix on it, and I was going to put it on. I was going to put it on my phone. And you know what popped up right below above it as an advert? It was fucking Disney, Disney Plus. <laughs> so if you search in the Google Play Store, if you search fucking Netflix, Disney Plus comes above it. Oh, so, yeah. That's that, desperation. That's desperation. That's desperation. Fucking whatever. Uh, they did it to themselves, and they are in such bad shape right now. I know uh, <clears throat> everybody's worshiping that last Ahsoka episode. Uh, it was trash. It was absolutely oh, 100%. trash. One hundred percent. No. Oh, I, I don't understand why people like that thing so much, other than the fact that it just has a bunch of member berries in it. I just uh, because people like the idea of Star Wars. I, I did this yeah. analogy in the stream the other day, but I'll do it again. Uh, I would, you know, sell comic books, and there were guys. There'd be guys who shopped my store for years. They buy a big stack of comic books. Then they tell me that they don't read them. They just take them <laughs> home and put them in the box. And I'm like, okay, uh, it's time for us to have the talk. So we sat down and it's like, do you still like comic books? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, no, you don't. You don't. And like, I like your money. That's great. But, uh, you know, we, and I had to do this with like five or six customers, but like, I don't want you to get in trouble with the wife. I don't want you to like not pay your bills. Uh, Cause you're buying $400 worth of comic books. You're not reading, you know, they might as well just set that money that's, on fire at that point. That's really bad business, Gary. <laughs> I know it's terrible business, but it, yeah. you got out of the comic book industry. You're like the Gary, end of off. But the moral of the story <laughs> is you like the idea of comics, but you really didn't like them anymore. That's where the entire star Wars fandom is. They are grasping at a wisp of a fucking dream that is Deader than dead. So I, I think that obviously with Hayden Hayden coming back, I think there's a lot of there was Again. a lot of cool shit in that episode to see, right? And this was not a Luke Skywalker shows up at the end of Mando and like does something. This was like an actual substantial part in it, and it was Hayden Christensen. In I the would world. argue that it wasn't. No, well, I, I, I would argue against it. There was a substantial I, yeah, part. I saw some nothing. of the clips, and I think it was now, really good. What I will it, say, there were some cool is, shots. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it. Don't, let me fucking finish my goddamn no. point. <laughs> what I'm saying is, obviously, there's some really cool shit to see, but overall, does it have any purpose? Does it serve anything? No. Does it help this show? No, it, it doesn't. And after that ends, the next 20 minutes of the show, you're like, what the fuck is this? So there's some people that in their minds, they can separate themselves from, that looks really cool, but it doesn't make any sense or... It doesn't really provide any value oh, overall versus people who are just seeing things and they're going to make fan cams about it and they're just going to drool over it. They're going to be like, oh, my God, I remember yeah, that light. The There's now. a difference between yeah. those things. The Anakin can spin. Oh, I'll look at it. Acknowledge, yeah. You can acknowledge one that something is fucking cool to see, but also you can say that it doesn't really serve a purpose in this. So story. it's not cool. No, it, it, it didn't. It's a story. Well, uh, Star Wars uh, is a fucking story. It's not a series of pictures or a fucking gif of a blinky fucking Hayden Christensen and Darth Vader. Uh, and that's all that was. Yeah, that that's, was it's for the, it's for Twitter. It for a gif. Yeah. It's it for a, Twitter. It so people can say, look at it. It's so awesome. for Social media, because they think social media interaction uh, equates to something and it equates to nothing. Yeah. Social media interaction equates to social media interaction. It's so insular but it, we've never seen it in any capacity translate to money in anything else. It hasn't translated into people going to the cinema, people going signing up to Disney Plus, Netflix, uh, buying this product, buying that product. It, it doesn't. It doesn't equate to that. It's, it's one of those just moments that people can can buzz about it on social media, and then they can use those metrics to then take to their shareholders or stockholders. Go well. This interact, this had this amount of interaction with this, and this amount of interaction with that. But with all those nice little images of of, of Anakin, 
It didn't stop the fact that the story made no fucking sense. If you were a new person to to um, just watching a live action show, what the fuck is the world between worlds? How the fuck has Ahsoka been alive under the water for fucking 10 hours or however long she's been? None of this fucking thing made a lick of fucking sense. It's written by fucking retards, four fucking retards that no. just want to put the gif up on Twitter and go, look, it's a Darth Anakin's. That's what Star Wars is. It's a fucking TV show. It's a TV show hidden behind a paywall that nobody's fucking paying for that they're giving away for one ninety nine with adverts or free with fucking mobile oh, phones. But but as it has Clone Star Wars. Wars. But I'm glad you pointed out how nonsense this episode was. Yeah, there were cool moments. And look, I think I even did the de-aging half decently. I was impressed that um, Hayden Christensen could still pull out some of the lightsaber moves. Although... He like, puts everybody it, else on the show. Like, he does. Exactly. He, he made Azaria, the daughter, like the, the, the lady there, she just looks so slow and he lethargic. Still can't act, it, which is why it's so unreal. It pisses oh, me off more. You heard me. Hayden, Hayden, you can't act. No, he, like Hayden pulled out some moves. The thing is, though, the underlining plot of what's actually happening in that episode is broken and nonsense. The whole Correct. This whole interaction of Ahsoka with Anakin is that she is... Well, he says, I've got to complete your training. Okay, okay. I would ask anyone, what did she actually learn? What was the achievement that she <laughs> gained from this action act? I have no idea! I just uh, watched right. it. And <laughs> you know what we what? learned? You know the girl, the little girl who played the young Ahsoka? She's yeah, same, the best same, same, actress who, same actress who said uh, Barbie's a fascist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't, well, we yeah, don't also know, young we don't yeah. know yeah. what was really going on here because the world between oh, worlds hasn't part. actually been explained in any capacity to the audience. So, I for think as, so as far in, yeah. as we were aware, Ahsoka was having a near-death experience, Illusion. which yeah. means ultimately Ahsoka imagined Anakin to teach her her final lesson and she taught herself her final fucking lesson <laughs> because the show is yeah. fucking <laughs> dumb. and and i think they are the very in i think they're very intentionally leaving it as ambiguous as possible so you don't have to potentially explain any of that and that several years to, like to, several bring, years. to bring anakin back to bring hayden back i feel like there needs to be more meat on that bone than hey live or die yeah. You know what I mean? And now you can, you can make works. a bunch of arguments about, well, this is actually because Ahsoka is fearful about herself turning into Anakin. And that would maybe have some like actual weight to it if we'd seen Ahsoka throughout the her entire arc be like, I'm struggling with the dark side and blah, blah, blah. But that hasn't been her. Like you had a couple little stories about that maybe in Clone Wars there and stuff like that, but we haven't seen that fucking forever. So the idea that that's like on her mind that she's worried she's going to turn into that, that's not believable. So Brian, and really you basically right. nailed it right there because there's no connective tissue to that. And I've had right. people coming into my comments saying, well, you don't understand. This is like Luke in the cave. He's like, no, you're fucking speculating. We what? are not giving what? any insight. Yes, they're trying to I, say that she. this is her test, like Luke in the cave at Dagobah. And it's like, no, it's not. You are fucking adding stuff that isn't there because there's literally no connective tissue to any of that. It, it is so funny. That's how people all are just Disney filling Star Wars in the gaps themselves, rather than the story basically telling the audience what is going on and no emotion and too. There's just yeah, no emotion you, in any of it. And if you actually pay attention to what's happening, right? If, if they're trying to say that this is a type of narrative of her conquering the darkness in her, Anakin is, he becomes evil in, in this vision and is like the Darth Vader thing. And and so she's fighting the evil version of Anakin. She has the option to kill him, and then she chooses to spare evil Anakin. She is choosing to let evil live. And it's like, no, oh, 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 hang on, if it's supposed to be a metaphor of you conquering evil, you're letting the evil survive. And then he like becomes good again and is like, you've done it. It, it makes so, no sense. So it would be just for that thing, it would be that she's conquering the evil inside herself and not allowing herself to kill like that. That would be the argument for that point. Right. What she needs to do is conquer the fucking yeah. boredom in me for watching this fucking shit. <laughs> That's what I need conquering. Well, what I would say is I haven't seen it. I saw some of the clips that uh, it was like hit my YouTube feed. It's like the five minute <coughs> kind of sizzle reel of of Anakin and Ahsoka. Uh, I thought all that was fucking cool as hell in isolation. I haven't seen the show, um, but I feel like this is kind of like Andor right now. 
Uh, the people that watch Geeks and Gamers and our channels, they don't fucking, they're not Disney Star Wars fans. And a lot of people are enjoying this show just like people enjoyed Andor. That is just a fact. It ain't just pronouns and bio weirdos. They're, I'm not saying everybody because it's very divided, but I feel like nobody liked Kenobi. Nobody liked Mandalorian Season 3. A lot of people liked Season 2 and Season 1 of Mandalorian, but... I'm seeing similar discussions from the last two episodes. Let me clarify, because the first few episodes, it didn't seem like anything. And of course, that's probably Hayden Christensen. It's driven. just Hayden. hundred percent, hundred percent. Remember, very driven. But yeah, Thank absolutely. Geez. Absolutely. But this is recall. Everybody here on this panel is mad because we didn't get Han, Luke and Leia. Isn't that a member Barry in, in the no, of course it no, is. no, yes, no. That is no. the core story no, of no. Star Wars. No, no, no. Let me talk here. Let me talk here. Yeah. Still a John Luke and Leia in a story, in the story together, yeah. would have been part of the fucking story, not a member Barry. I'll give you an example. The, the Enterprise D crew getting back together on the Enterprise D was part of the fucking story. They built up to it through the entire fucking season. That's what people <laughs> expected. That's what people were promised with Disney Star Wars. It was fucking clickbait. Han, Luke, and Leia not being together was one is the single the biggest cinematic. It's not a member Barry. Based on what? Based on what? Based on fans wanting it, right? Do you know what a member right. Barry is, Jer yes, Jeremy? Yes, remember these three characters you love. We're okay. going to put them together as so, somebody we who so we can all cheer. So as somebody who watched cheer. the show, as somebody who watched the show, I don't give a shit about the neighbors. I just, somebody who watched the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this American is so loud. How dare you? I and it'll show you. That is literally meant so you can cheer and be happy. That's what it's meant for. No, no, it's not. Are you what fucking did you want? Did you, want them to, you want the whole movie, Han, Luke, and Leia, or did you want a moment with them together? I wanted the whole fucking movie. So, but you said you just wanted to see them together on no, screen. That's, that's the very least. No, no, that you don't know. You don't know what my argument that's is. That's literally been. We never saw Han, Luke, and Leia on screen together. You didn't clarify a whole movie. Thirty minutes, forty-five minutes, an hour. You said we didn't see it. Just I have it clarified a that about you a thousand it. times, Jeremy. And it's I said, okay to want it, but I'm just saying, don't act like that's not a member. Barry, it over is. people's not winning an argument. Okay, so the very least they could have done, and I meant least, as in least, is put them in a scene together, which they couldn't even manage to do. Well, what agree. everybody wanted was all three fucking movies with Han, Luke, and Leia. That's what they should have done, and that's why they're failing right now because they didn't do that, and they well, should have given Han a good thing enough and yeah, Luke. Good send off instead of spreading them out because it doesn't really fucking matter because they didn't fucking do it. What Anakin did by showing up again, somehow Anakin showed up again in a fucking Star Wars show. By the way, I, this might come as breaking news to somebody. Anakin Skywalker's story is over. It's done. That's my thing, yeah. Yes, it's, it it's ended. Yeah. It ended with Return of the Fucking Jedi. This is the very definition of a member berry, and it worked. It worked on a bunch of seal clapping people. I get it. That's fine. You want to be a fan, you be a fan. But to tell me that worked in an actual story, as I watched the episode, by the way, and when I watched the episode, it was meaningless because it's all in her fucking head. He wasn't really there. Which means it it's not even a member berry. But, it's but, nothing. but Hayden Christensen was really there, and a lot of people just want to see Hayden Christensen get his redemption arc, and that's what a lot of people are He already got his redemption arc. He got his redemption arc, the return of the Jedi. Do you yeah. want to see him no, again saying, and again? No, I'm saying that Hayden He's Christensen, the actor. Yeah, actor. Are you He's saying in real actor. life? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, listen. Can let me say something, Gary. Let me. Okay. I symp I, I sympathize with both here. All right. This may be a little bit of a normie take, but let me let me let me let me go here. All right. Hayden is one of my favorite actors of all time. Anakin Skywalker is my favorite character forever, always. Star Wars. He is Star Wars. Anytime I think of Star Wars, I think of Hayden. Maybe it's because like I'm a huge prequel fan. Obviously, I love the OG Star Wars. But okay, I felt the same way when I watched Hayden today. Because I, I sat down, like, I'm going to watch this unbiased. I'm just going to watch this. Let's, let's see where this goes. Yeah, I agree with Az. I'm totally lost, dude. I'm a normie with the Rebels and all that. I have no idea what's going on with Ahsoka. I was lost. But, however, there's, like, an emotional side of me that loves Hayden so much. And I want to see him get the spotlight he deserves because he was so hated on in real life. I sympathize with him on that level. But, 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 because of the story how episode six ended i agree with gary that we needed han luke and leia to carry on in seven six and eight because the story called for it not freaking mary sue ray okay so i feel the same way about what they did with anakin now i i, I just could not identify how the story or the plot was calling 
for Anakin to come back. Yeah, there's an emotional tie there to see him again. But I felt the same way with Obi-Wan too. Like, it's like at some point, you just got to admit, Disney knows how to pull your strings whenever they want to. It's all emotional manipulation. The story's not calling for this. They're bringing them back because they know that they're failing. But at the same time, I do. I get it. I get it, Jeremy. There's like that. I, I love him. I want to see him succeed. Well, yeah, but that's, well, that's what I'm saying. saying. But they're, they're always husks. So Force Awakens. They've been wanting to bring Anakin slash Darth Vader back since the very beginning. So this honestly is just a recycled well, idea. I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. They wanted to not touch anything george lucas and it all failed mm -hmm. the reason they're oh. doing this they actively did not want to bring anything george lucas star wars and they, they actively the pushed they actively yeah. pushed their new characters and it all failed so that's why this will begin to set Daily things right times. now hey, they want to know what i was reaching, thinking now they're reaching to what the fans really want now it's way too late go ahead ray Drew. movie you want to know what i was thinking the whole time i was watching ray a movie you want to know what movie. I was the whole time hey what's going on the emperor is alive this entire time. <laughs> the whole yes. time. And that, and that, and that, so Not there the is. <laughs> I, I do think, right, they None meant to leave matters, it ambiguous. Gary. None of I, this matters. The Palpatine is alive this whole time. So I think they meant to leave it ambiguous whether this was a near-death experience or whether she was actually in the world between worlds. That was a real Anakin. They wanted people to be arguing about this, I think. But unfortunately, if you are of the belief that this is the real Anakin Skywalker, that he actually somehow is in the world between worlds, that this is him. You know, maybe in addition to teaching the message of live or die, maybe he could have been like, oh, by the way, Ahsoka, the emperor has like a bunch of clone bodies and he's on this place called Exegol. All you need is the Wayfinder. I had a copy of that. It was sitting there at this random temple on this stupid planet. <laughs> maybe go check that out because yeah. that dude actually is still alive, right? They can call it the emperor's new clones. <laughs> that, that's the reality if that is the real anakin you know maybe he should warn somebody about something like that but i have a question I, about star wars jargon you go ahead if anakin is considered a member berry would ray be considered a dingleberry yes yes yes, yes. yes. but yes. It, and i think when you're looking at the idea of han luke and leia well if you include them that's a member berry. i disagree like when you look at say spider-man no way home um is including like Toby and Andrew, like to get your nostalgia, like absolutely. But what they did in that movie is they made their roles very important to what was going on and even to Tom Holland's journey. And I think that they did that fairly well. So, and I think that's kind of how they really should have utilized Han, Luke and Leia, make them very important. Even if you do want to introduce these new heroes that you're using, make them integral to the story itself. When it comes to this, this is more than just a Luke Skywalker randomly shows up and leaves moment to me. This was something that they wanted to do to get you to care about Ahsoka. Because the truth is, Ahsoka is the least interesting part of her own fucking show right now. Whenever Balon's on screen or Anakin, those are the things that people care about and people talk about. This is an effort, like it always has been, to try to make Ahsoka more important than she was ever meant to be. So to have right. the goat, to have Anakin come back to give her this one last lesson in live action, one, it rewards Clone Wars and Rebels fans who just want to see recreations of their scenes in live action, which is a fairly a, 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 sig a significant but small portion of the fan base who actually watched all those shows to completion. Yep. But it also tells the audience, the general audience, this character is so fucking important. And that is what they were trying to do with Anakin. Yeah. And and Rosario, like, Dawson, Rosario Dawson wasn't even in the best Ahsoka in the fucking show. No. She wasn't, no, and she it wasn't. Was, you've, already, you've already failed when you have to tell the the audience that they're the main character in the fucking fifth episode uh, is important. It, it's not, and she gets overshadowed by a member Barry Anakin coming back because he just came back in Obi Wan. By by the way, this isn't even something new. It's not something we haven't seen in the last couple he didn't of get years. Justified. He didn't get justified in this in, in Obi Wan. He did not. Get, Anakin was completely fucking ruined again yeah. in Obi Wan. And, and they, they put him on the marketing. Yeah, but they, he got yeah, this one. He got but, fucking well, disarmed. Okay, I, I'm saying. I'm saying. Yeah, didn't he? Now again, from didn't he let her win? No. No, she no, basically he disarmed her. It, it, so my whole it, it issue may have looked that this, way because of how it, bad it, it was. It, it, but you have a guy with a lightsaber. Like he let her win. It so like if you are no, unarmed, no, you can't no, take him no, out. No, no, no. There's so no here is, you can take that away. The argument, there is an argument out there right now. There's some people that say she beat him. There's some people that say he yeah, that was yeah. part of her test, right? Was to let her have well, that opportunity to kill him. That argument is going on out there, just for the record. Guys, 
it was in her head. So yes, yeah. she beat yeah. him. Okay, <laughs> he's <laughs> not real. Yeah. And no, they actually go out of their way but, to make it look like Ahsoka, even though like she's looking like she's moving slow and everything. She lands more hits on him. She gives him a good kick in the head, right? In the actual choreography. And so they're trying to say she is more talented in fighting than Anakin. Looks like you don't have much left to show me. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, it's just that then the choreography doesn't match that out because Hayden is just moving so much better and agile. Than... So much better. The funny thing yeah. too is like when she landed that kick, he could have bisected her with a lightsaber. I mean, that was such a dumb move. Right now at this time... She should be in 58 fucking pieces in this whole series by the time she's left the cells open to attack. At yeah. this point in time, and if, if there's a better argument, please throw it at me right now. But And, and I'm thinking off the top of my head, Hayden Christensen might be the single most popular actor within the Star Wars universe right now because of the fan base loving him and the prequels and how he was treated. Jeremy, Hayden Christensen, not Hayden's Anakin. Just, are, okay, can you, are you going to clarify this is what's left of the Star Wars fandom? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I currently, right now. Of the, currently, of the entire right Star Wars fandom, the tens of millions of Star Wars fans out there, you're going to tell me Hamill, I think Hayden? Mark Hamill has done unbelievable damage to his, uh, his sure. character Harrison uh, Ford? and his name. I Harrison think Ford's Harrison so popular. Ford, I think Harrison Ford is the most famous person that's ever been in Star Wars, unquestionably, but he clearly doesn't <clears> love Star Wars. Hayden Christensen loves Star Wars, and he loves the Star Wars fandom, and the fandom loves him. And we saw the reactions of Hayden Christensen at Star Wars Celebration. It was fucking unbelievable. We've yeah, never seen a reaction like that. They, they, they so feel sorry they don't for him. They feel sorry for him. Yes, they do. No, a lot they don't. Movies. No, they love you him, and they think he that he was mistreated. Did you not – just say you want they wanted him to have a redemption arc it's because they their sympathy yeah. they yeah, feel sorry no, for no, him. no it's because they love him and they want him to get his moment because and they, kind of they feel like he wasn't a pre no they feel yeah. like he wasn't he wasn't appreciated yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah you're, 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 appreciate. you're being yeah, Gary, right. we know Gary we know you don't like the prequels right. we get that we understand that but a lot of people love the fucking prequels a I lot. understand that too people love the but prequels. it's still sympathy and they love it's, Hayden Christians you felt like he was done dirty I agree he was done dirty he was it's done dirty. Sympathy. That's sympathy. It's, it, it's it can be both. love and respect for him. Why not both? And they want him Hayden to... Hayden is a generational yeah. icon. He is he a generational absolutely icon. absolutely is. Right. Yeah. Generation yeah. Is. Gary's he completely really being disrespectful That's to Hayden Christian. Felt. For somebody that grew up at my age, I was, t yes. I was 10, 11 when he came on the field, right? Playing the video games, watching him go through what he went through, through the two movies. Even though I don't love those movies completely, right? I know that they had issues. But I do love Hayden Christensen as Anakin because a lot of his yeah. stuff, oh, I felt well, he did a fantastic and, job. And Ahsoka should have and, uh, 14 million more views uh, this week. Well, well see, Star Wars has see, been degraded that. over the last 10 years by Here. Disney. So now How there's only a small amount back. of people that want to go watch it. We don't know. And I when they do go watch that's it, problem. we can't know do any Hayden Christensen's <laughs> right. beta Hayden that Christensen. shows up is not real. They never are. They bring Garrett. they bring Boba Fett, the person oh, you love. Hey, he's hey, not Garrett, real. Garrett, let let Az talk because he can barely talk. He's dead. <laughs> no, he's dead. Uh, Sorry, I didn't. I didn't know you're carrying on. So As is the real life impersonation of current Star Wars. He's barely here. <laughs> barely. <laughs> barely anyone notices me. Um, <laughs> Hayden Christians. Uh, Hayden Christensen. I can't even say his had, name. Had an opportunity. <laughs> well, he should have had an opportunity. Because we shouldn't even be talking about Hayden Christensen in Ahsoka. We should have been talking about Hayden Christensen in Kenobi and mm -hmm. talking about the great story between Kenobi and, and Anakin Skywalker and Kenobi trying to, to deal with the fact that he failed as a master. How did the, 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 the chosen one, how did his Padawan, the one who was actually meant to bring balance to the Force, fall so hard in his book? That should have been that should have been the redemption for Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker. That should have been the redemption for Hayden Christian uh, Christensen as the actor. And people should be talking about Kenobi as as something very unique in Star Wars. As we we jump between uh, a current day Obi Wan and then we jump back at the relationship which could have gone through segments of the Clone Wars, which we saw uh, mm. little snippets of what they could have done with the Clone Wars. Uh, in this episode of Ahsoka. That's where Hayden Christensen should have got his redemption arc. But the thing is, they decided to go with a racist marketing campaign 
for a dog shit character that nobody fucking wants, nobody gives a shit about, nobody fucking cares about, because everyone nowadays in Disney, Star Wars, is so concerned with fucking representation that storytelling has taken such a back seat to all of this. The only thing that they have left is to dangle things in front of you and go, member. Yes. There is no story in this fucking show. There was no story in this yeah. fucking episode. This like is nothing. This is literally a segment of scenes wiggling people wiggling about going look we, we we did a clone wars L look we did a darth vader uh look that's all yeah. this fucking shit is now yes. well they basically and think a collection story. of scenes is a story which it's not and, and that's the problem this story is so fucking thin in the, these first five episodes it, it's it feels like an animated show. Like, it feels like a cartoon. You know what I mean? Like, that's how thin the plot oh, yeah, feels it does. for it. And, I again, the Anakin stuff is the stuff that, you know, takes all that, like, takes everyone's attention away from that. But at the end of the day, when Ahsoka wakes back up, you're like, you're left with the same old shit. I would say the, uh, one of the added, the positives about this show, or about this episode, was that Sabine wasn't in it. Because she's, <laughs> yeah. fucking, she's fucking terrible. Idiot. Her, her and Ahsoka uh, have the worst chemistry possible. If they just did a show with the fucking droids, it would be better. Just Hu Yang would. and Chopper <laughs> walking around. I would take that all day over any of these actual actors or characters. No Ray Stevenson but, either. I, no Ray Stevenson fake, in this one. Fake I C3PO talked, and say fake R2D2. I, I talked about um I talked about this. I don't know if it was this daily or yesterday, Jeremy, but I made the 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 wrestling analogy. Yes, a very good Darth wrestling Vader, analogy. Right? Very good. What they use Anakin and Vader for, and all his different appearances now in Disney Star Wars, GP. It's it's to put people over, right? Mm. It's to make yeah. you, oh my God, that's Darth Vader. That's Anakin. That's the best, the best, that's the scariest. And then somebody doesn't die to him or barely escapes yes. or puts up yes. a good fight. And it's like, it's used to put that person over, to elevate this mm -hmm. person to some level in, rel in relative to Darth Vader. And I feel like mm -hmm. that's getting tiresome. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like the, the more people that you see either beat Anakin or Darth Vader or escape Anakin or Darth Vader, the more it's like, okay, why is he so scary then? I feel like it does damage to the overall kind of like the I've never been more proud of. Isn't that yeah, basically the intent of what they're trying yeah, to do? It's, it's a mankind. What I just like, said. Go, go, go to back to Rogue One. St. Louis. Yeah, Missouri. exactly. But go back, <laughs> go back to Rogue One. Like, what's the one thing people remember at Rogue One? The Darth Vader, Vader. scene. Yeah. Like, oh, again, yeah. like it's been I, used I for that since the, the very beginning that Disney had control of this, you know? Yeah, and I've it's never more, been it's more proud more of Ryan for his it's women analogy. over men. <laughs> it's just straight up the same thing. Women over men, that's all. You could have called this thing Star Girls, and I would have believed you. <gasps> yeah. No, they should have called it the Clam Wars. <laughs> oh, there you go. The Clam Wars. <laughs> I, I, I do, like, the regardless of, like, again, I think there's a couple of different perspectives that are kind of being discussed here. But the bottom line is, is Ahsoka should not be alive. She should not be utilized in this capacity. She's not that important. She never has supposed to. She was never supposed to be this important. And now you're intertwining her into to timelines that she should not be a part of. And she is interrupting everything. And it's all because they have no idea what they're doing. So they're basically turning to the last relevant character that they believe they have. But now even that character isn't even going to be relevant when it's all said and done. Um, and that is the truth of, of the matter. Um, but I do think that a lot of the reaction from Hayden Christensen is driving a lot of it. And I think it's justified from a certain point of view. Um, so I, I'm okay with that because I do love Hayden Christensen. You could like love him all you want. I, I don't, I mean, I hope he made a ton of money from this. I hope he made a shit ton yeah. of money. Uh, I think he was done dirty for Star Wars, but I probably don't did. I, think I, I don't, every time, like I don't think he's got a lot of people. I don't think he had a lot of people calling him for stuff. So no, and he won't. And he won't I, because I, I don't even care about an actor. I, I don't not. even care about the money. I, I don't care about him making a lot of money. I think it probably just feels really good for okay. him to be a part of something like that. That's, you know, and I, you know what, I said that when uh, when when Obi Wan came out. I'm like, you know what, I'm happy. I'm happy he came back. He got his moment in the sun, sun again. He's always been nice to the fans. He's never been a dick. I got nothing against the guy. I just don't care. And the fact that they brought him back again, and yeah, this is a year blown later. Up, it's it's being blown up to this thing that just doesn't. Not that many people are watching Ahsoka. It's dude. Its ratings are right around Secret Invasion. Okay, so that that those are shit. Those are dog shit. This is amplified nothing on social media that will be yes. forgotten within a couple of weeks, like The Witcher was when yes. it came out. Completely forgotten. 
uh, this is the, the right. social media reaction. Yeah. You, you have to keep in mind, and I've said it from the beginning. These are like this is a certain demographic of fans that are very active on social media. If you go yep. through some of the hashtags, you see some of the same accounts using hashtag Anakin. They'll tweet like 30 times about it, you know, different fan cams and stuff like that. So it is like, that's the demographics of the audience's core fan base for things like Clone Wars and Rebels. Some of the people who grew up with it. Obviously that's not everybody, right? I was older when I watched Clone Wars. Jeremy obviously was older when he watched Clone Wars and Rebels and things like that. But that's a, a big part of that core audience. And you're seeing... They're very excited on social media, but they were very yeah. excited for the premiere. It was actually the biggest thing we've seen social media wise for Star Wars for an opening season. Like the biggest we'd ever seen if you look but, at Parrot Analytics, yeah. okay. but it didn't translate yeah, to ratings. The prob- exactly, exactly, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and, and yeah. the problem well, also is that because their mindset is so much on these moments, because really it's all about George, moments, very I short periods of time. Have- you don't have to then subscribe because you know all the key things that you're going to ever want to watch are going to be on social media in just 10 minutes from the episode's release. And you'll say, oh, the, the, I, I, the saw, two, I saw all that I need to see, you know? The two do not work in concert with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, the WWE, for, for, for years, would talk about their social media analytics. And their social media analytics were huge. They had massive interaction with their tweets, massive interaction with the little clips that they would put on there. And guess what? It never translated to anything in terms of viewership. The viewerships every single week were pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. One of the biggest audiences uh, that consumed WWE product was India. So they're like, oh, wow, right. Let's invest in India then. We're going to put the belt on an Indian champion. We're going we're gonna to put the uh, WWE.com uh, up on uh, for India to subscribe to. Uh, all this kind of business doesn't translate because the reason why it was so popular in India is because it was fucking free for them to watch. So suddenly, when the WWE's put their put their uh, you know their their premier uh, premium website up on there and ask somebody in India to pay ten dollars a month to subscribe to WWE, they're like, wait a minute, ten dollars a month? That's like fucking thirty percent of our wages. <laughs> Who, who the fuck is going to spend 30% of their wages on your fucking thing that we get for free right now? It, the, the, the correlation between these figures and what translates into numbers, translates into viewership, and translates into money, they do not work in concert with each other. So they can, they can retweet the same GIF a million times. It doesn't mean they get a single extra view, and they haven't because the analytics show that. The analytics show this is just the same fucking number, probably the same fucking people that just tune into every other fucking Disney Plus garbage that's made by Star Wars or Marvel. Well, I mean, there, there's... It's really hard to quantify, like, the, the Clone Wars and, and all that stuff, the fan base. Like, I've said this many times. The, the Season 7 Clone Wars, one of those final episodes is like one of the highest rated episodes of all time on IMDb. Now, I know you can question that, but the episodes it's intertwined with are top tier Breaking Bad episodes and top tier Game of Thrones episodes. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at. Like the only things that are ahead of that Clone Wars episode are Breaking Bad episodes and and Game of Thrones. And there's like three or four of them. The sheer numbers though, right, exactly. That's where it comes into it. But if you look at the sheer number of people that voted on that Clone Wars episode versus the number of people that voted on the Game of Thrones and the Breaking Bad, it's, it's a massive gap. But that is something to be said. And it ain't every one of them. And so that's clearly something that is beloved. It's like a 9.9. And I know you can question IMDb. I'm just saying the bottom line is, it ain't like some fucking random episode of fucking, uh, you know, dog shit episode is intertwined with Game of Thrones and Bad of, and Breaking Bad. It's it's an episode of Clone Wars. The fan base is strong and they're passionate. But the they're not huge in numbers. And passionate, they're not. But they're small. They're yes. not. They're very small in numbers. Very small right. in numbers. And I'll say the same thing about like I love the expanded universe, right? Fucking reading books, reading all these comic books, playing nearly every one of these video games. That's a small segment of the fan base, right? Not everyone's gonna sit down and read a fucking novel written in 1991 about the next adventures of Han, Luke, and Leia. Uh, but obviously, expanded universe fans very passionate. But you, you'd have to kind of admit that, yeah, that's not the majority of people out there. Um, and I think when you look at Ahsoka, you you have to look at it through the lens of, is this show appealing 
to that general population because it's, it's got a budget like it needs to. It's got the marketing like it needs to, but will it and does it? That's the question we're all left with. That to the premiere certainly doesn't look like it. Will this change things? Will the fact that they have Disney ads with Anakin in it, you know, facing Ahsoka now on prime Thursday night football, everywhere online, they're putting these ads out right now with Anakin in it to try to get people to go and sign up for $1.99 a month. Like, holy shit. They, we'll see if it has get, any impact. Make, it, make a Star Wars movie. The, you know what? Stick with your guns. Uh, have this Dave Filoni universe lead up to a movie. We'll see how it does. <laughs> I, 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 I think it flops. I think well, that thing a lot. It, it, well, hard. I think anything Star Wars does is going to be a flop, regardless of Dave yeah. Filoni. What about the Lando movie? Else, so, yeah, <laughs> that ain't never happening. Uh, they've turned a one of the greatest cinematic franchises in the history into a shitty brand on a <laughs> shitty streaming service, and now yeah. there's much more, much more bad Star Wars than there is good, like uh, orders of magnitude. One positive take though from this week's Ahsoka. Is that yeah, uh, no, 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 don't be so cynical. I'm if, gonna be uh, if you can't abuse your That's powers in general, what can you do? <laughs> I know. <laughs> can, can we talk about that sequence with Jason hearing the lightsabers and then no. telling Hera to just listen, listen harder and she's uh, able to hear them too? That was so cringe. Which, uh, this uh, uh, the simplest way to describe Dave Filoni's Star Wars is no one dies and everyone has the force. I saw yeah, that going basically, around. Basically, mm. yeah. And pretty much. Like, that is, that seems to be what they're indicating, that she was able to hear that through the Force. Um, it's just fucking wild to me. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. You guys know that that no, mean it, girl, Hera, she played Ramona Flowers in... Um, Scott that Pilgrim? Movie. Scott yes. Pilgrim, yes. Yeah, yeah. that's Mary Elizabeth Winston. Mary, She's married yeah. to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Barbie. She's married that's to Ian McGregor. I, I didn't take it as Hera hearing it. I thought it was just more of an audio cue for the audience more so than anything else. But... It was totally oh. her hearing. Yeah, well, no, she heard, heard, she heard yeah. it. Um, I took but, it as her hearing, yeah. But, but what um, I wish, uh, to me, that it's, it's so unnecessary to do because in that sequence, I, I just wish she would have, like, trusted her son, right? Trusted his mm -hmm. feelings, trusted yeah. that he has the force and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that would have been even more powerful for her to just be like, okay, Jason, I understand. Like, and then turn to the guy and be like, we got to go look for her. He's like, what are you talking about? Hey, I trust him. His father was a blah, blah, blah. That yeah. would be hey, more powerful than her just her. listening harder. Hey, we big found fat her. Asian She's drowned. Pilot. She's been yeah. dead for hours. Okay. Hey, there you hey, go. Big, hey, big fat Asian pilot. Uh, she can survive in the ocean for hours without breathing. So like, let's totally look for her some more. There is some Jedi hibernation techniques. No, they yeah. didn't really explain that. <laughs> no, but the, the, the if they actually did, it would have made more sense, though. I know. The, the whole setup is really, really dumb because yeah. either she entered into another dimension somehow, or she was unconscious and this was a dream. And so if it's a dimension, how the freaking hell did she enter into another? It was it just a portal that opened up arbitrarily. It, it is so random and nonsense. And then if it was a dream, it's like, Bull crap, she survived that long. Yes, there's Jedi, but like seriously, like it, that long. There is another long. option, Shad, and What's that that? Is that she was resurrected through the will of the Force. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know, I know, no. This, that she was resurrected, and that's why she has turned from Ahsoka the Gray to Ahsoka the White with the will of the Force. Um, and this would not be the first time Ahsoka has been resurrected from being dead by basically a Force entity. We saw it happen in Mortis Arc in Clone Wars. Um, I do think that is an option of the multiple things to explain what actually fucking happened that will never, ever get explained. I did have a question, um, though. I think it's you. ridiculous and insane that she's, you know, for like the third fucking time Ahsoka gets saved from death like that, but hey. Hey, Dave Floney. For Gary. What's up, Gary, what's up with the space sperms? What are those? I don't understand. Those are uh, called Purgle, and those are... Space whales. They are space whales. They have the ability to go to hyperspace, and it's actually how, in <laughs> canon in the Star Wars universe, they figured out what hyperspace lanes were safe because they, they were able to track the Purgle and where they were going. Yeah, yeah, but, but, they, but Drew, I'm yeah. glad I'm not the only one who had that visual imagery implied by those things. I was like, God, what is going what? on? Yeah, they have they, hyperspace they... buttholes. <laughs> yeah, oh, I saw it. You see, yeah, that yeah, was they, the contrast for me when I watched One Piece and then this. Like One Piece was actually explaining things to me. Like I'm like, oh, I'm yeah, yeah, now. going on in a world 
in a crazy pirate world where people talk to each other on fucking snails, it makes more fucking sense. Yeah, it does. Star Wars that has been around. That for was 50 a contrast years. to me uh, being a normie. I was actually well, understanding what's and, going and on. It, well, the, thing, the funny thing too is it's actually fun. One Piece is fun. Ahsoka is not. No, One Piece is amazing. And, like to be clear, the Purgles were established in Rebels. So if you didn't watch Star Wars Rebels, you have literally no idea what the fucking Purgles are, other than the right. couple sentences you got in this. And, and they were stupid then, by the way. Yeah, they were. <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> I don't think that every single thing needs to be explained in detail. People got upset when midichlorines were introduced. However, there needs to be a balance. And I don't think the show has hit that balance of taking these characters or themes or storylines that everybody who watched the animated shows knows and make it accessible enough to the general audience that they can walk in. And well, even the in the show. original Star Wars, you had a simple explanation of what the force is, and that's all you needed to understand. And it was that one you know, basically, you know, series of lines that was done by Obi-Wan Kenobi. It, you know, binds us together, you know, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And that's all you really need to give a valid explanation to this thing that nobody knows about. Well, listen, you, I... You, 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 go, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead I was just gonna, I, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, instead of having a space well, very simple explanation of hyperspace, you go to hyperspace. Yeah, that's also. You've, all, you've that's already also got too. all the fucking maps charted. We see them constantly looking at fucking maps. Just by that, the audience can say, you've mapped out the system. It makes sense that you know where you're leaping from one point to another. It's not rocket. We don't need no fucking space vaginas firing <laughs> off and going, oh, well, look, there's a, there's a safe hyperspace. No, it just, there's a difference between science fiction and science fantasy. And science fantasy is Star Wars. So you can look at something yes. like that and go, fine. Star mm. Trek, they talk about, well, the, when we go to warp, why aren't we smashing into planets of warp? That's because we're going through, we have the deflector dish, and the deflector dish manage, you know, disperses all the, 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 the small micro things which can smash through the ship and all that. It, that's the difference between science fiction and science fantasy. Star Wars is science fantasy. Well, you do the have a bit that of that can... in Star Wars because there's the whole thing with the mass shadow that probably most people don't know about, but I do because I've read stuff and you know run the role playing game. And the whole thing with the mass shadow is it's the reason why they have to plot courses with the nav computer because if you don't, as Han explained in, in Star Wars, you might end up in an asteroid field that and it's basically it game over. In Star Wars, so yes, yeah. Yeah, and it, that's, it goes into more detail and obviously, hey, why can't you jump into hyperspace in the atmosphere? Well, because of the gravity well that's generated by these monstrous planets right. or whatever, uh, which they've ignored that in Star Wars by hyperspace skipping in Rise of Skywalker. But yeah. well, we know we we you know, a lot of people question if, if people from Lucasfilm Disney watch this show. Um, I have it confirmed. I just got an email directly from George Lucas because he that was very Gary's very unhappy with the direction. But uh, this is this is breaking news. So George Lucas actually walked into the offices, DDT'd um, Kathleen Kennedy uh, because she didn't respect the rules of uh, being locked out by uh, the Daves. But uh, now Gary, right here, this is a uh, spoilers for you to come back to the show. I'm sharing my screen now. There I'm you go, Gary. I'm here. Uh, so right there, Gary. That's all you, buddy. Uh, I can't so, see anything. There we can't go. see that. I, I love how everyone's come to the same conclusion with Ahsoka the White. It's so fucking funny. Dude, but it's, on... it's not a. It's not a fucking conclusion. Dave Filoni yeah. put Ahsoka the White at the end of Rebels, and yes, he's he also did. tweeted out pictures of Ahsoka and Gandalf. It's not like it's a fucking puzzle or or anything like no, that. No, it's pretty like, fucking he's obvious. He's always tried to connect these two characters. Yeah, so Gary, are you excited now? <laughs> uh, I'm totally in now. You got me. That's my member, Barry. Dave Filoni is going to be one of the people who've managed to take a, a character that started <laughs> that most people initially hated to turn them into a character that people loved and now back again into a character <laughs> people fucking hate. Yeah, oh, it's come full circle. The circle yeah. is I complete. Have been, I, I have an important question Your about that image. Complete. Oh, like so, so is that like a thing so dave Lurdy is making a soka a soka the wise all right uh -huh. is she more powerful than she was before as a soka oh, the probably wise? we'll and find so, out next week so she has white uh, uh, no never mind, never mind. Well, she, she, she ray unlocked powers. second level girl boss that's that's what happens so she'll get ray powers then so she'll yeah. so heal is, people and all that stuff is, is 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 i'm just wondering if her power has is associated with the you know color or shade white i'm just i'm just wondering i've got to be white. I, I think the, oh, I think the idea 
if I were guessing, I think the Ahsoka idea the is going to be system. that uh, Ahsoka has now rid herself of any fear of ending up like Anakin and is fully ready to embrace and walk the path. That, that's kind of what I think they're going to go for, and that's going to make her be more confident and more powerful and shit. That's what I would assume. They they don't have say, to write anything as long as the fans just impress yeah, what they think right, happened. Yeah, on it. yeah, yeah, right. You'll just you'll just write in a show that none of us are getting. <laughs> I, but I'm just, just, I, I'm just telling you that's what Ryan, they're gonna do. Ryan's been pretty spot Ryan. on about all of this for the last uh, year or so now with his predictions. Um, yeah. And it, as with that, basically, I mean, I can't remember because I wasn't really into wrestling when John Cena first kind of came onto the scene. He mm. wasn't like overly popular at first, right? No, and then no, he, and then he, he became he was, popular no. and then it became hated. So Ahsoka's the John Cena of Star Wars. Well, he he was he was pretty much <laughs> she, when, when he first everybody. started, he, he his first uh, uh, match was against Kurt Angle uh, in the ruthless, <laughs> ruthless aggression, aggression, ruthless aggression, and yes. and people loved him. He actually they loved him when he started, and then he turned into the you know the word life rap, rap, rapping yeah, yeah. punk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, people hated him. Then they went vince went full in on him yeah and then he just became polarizing he you he, know he, so, so he, he was never he, like yeah he could loved lose, yeah equally loved and hated uh yeah. throughout his whole career so yeah <laughs> now if he came back he'd be like hating he'd hero. yeah he'd be a hero <laughs> now yeah because oh, no, he, he is so he's, fucking bad so. he's been coming back and he gets huge tears now yeah yeah yeah, so. yeah. Uh, i yeah, just can't cause they're like oh look I it's a, an actual star <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 I can't Star wait for Wars the is... light to come out uh, and save Star Wars again because that's yes. what's going to follow this. Yoda story. will be in that. Yoda. And by the that. way, by yes, the way, I, I think there's some merit to that with with Hayden Christensen. I think there's certainly uh, parts uh, people want to see Hayden Christensen do right. They want to see Anakin done right. But I also think there's there's probably parts that are just like, oh look, he's a fucking Star Wars character people give a shit about. Mm. Oh, great. So they can bring Anakin back when they remake the original trilogy and just have Hayden Christensen play Darth Vader. Yeah, and, sure. And that's the thing. I, I forget who said it earlier, but Anakin's story is over, right? Yeah. Their, over. His story is yes. old. It's over. It's completed. We don't need any extra stuff. So the, they're they're bringing him back to utilize him in this way to get you to care about other characters. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. if you get too much of that, they will inherently change that story. They already have. Look at what happened in the in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, right? They they took what was a set story, they changed it for the worse. And now yes. that's forever in our fucking heads. I think there's also a third person. I mean, this is how I feel is like I don't I love these characters, but I'm sick of watching these shill companies bring them back just to crap and diarrhea all over them. Like I don't that's why I don't care. Like when I hear Hayden's coming back, I don't care anymore. Because I don't want to see the guy get like diarrhea splattered all over his face because of Disney's a you know ESG controlled monster. That's how I feel. Like it's I'm totally disconnected. I have no I have no feeling for it anymore. It's just like not even real. It's not authentic. It's all just Kathleen Kennedy pushing the forces female over everybody. I, I, I agree with you, Drew. When the they brought back Luke and Mandalorian season two, I was pissed. Legitimately pissed off when they did it. Because of what they did to him in the fucking movies. I do think that there's something to the like it does feel like Star Wars has become professional wrestling. It really does. <laughs> like it's it's just Aww. a like cheap pop here, cheap pop there. Hayden needs to go ahead and drop the N word like Hogan did, and then they fire <laughs> him, and then and then he can come back in three years and everybody can love him again. That's the only way that they can keep yeah. milking this one right there. I, um, I mean the the whole thing is Star Wars. Yeah, I said it last night on open bar, and uh, Robert Mar Burnett was the one who brought this up. It's not about anything anymore. It's just about itself. You know, it's it used to be a story. Yeah, it's yeah, self-referential. Yeah. It's just, yeah. just self-referential over and over again. Same thing with Kurtzman Trek. And uh, it's it's the, the, the only chance this thing has is if you put it on ice for a decade. Like nothing. And, and nothing can come out. Maybe squirt out some fucking novels or, or I don't know, just bring the EU back uh, in a few years. But right now, every second you make does more and more damage. And however loud this smaller group of fandom sounds, it's a smaller group of fandom. Nobody's fucking watching this shit. It even when Gary's oh. trying to give him decent advice, he's still indirectly calling it shit. He's like, if you want to <laughs> squirt out some <laughs> novels. <laughs> Here, I'll share, I'll share this. This is, this is absolutely symptomatic of current day Star current Wars. Current day but... fucking pronouns. Current oh, day, motherfucker. Morning. Reflect sabers. Right? Fastest growing lightsaber community. 
Would you accept it uh, if it were Ahsoka who took the Skywalker name? Jesus Christ, uh, no. Where's the dislike button? No. <laughs> they know this has been out there for a long time. They, these are the same people that do fan art of Ahsoka fucking Anakin, so. Uh, like, uh, uh, this is, see, this is why so many people had a problem with that Ray bullshit. Uh, and, like, now look at this scenario. Like, it just, again, you can say, hey, it's just a name, bro. Just it's just pronouns, bro. Yeah, I it's think Ray. Bro. I think Ray walked so that Ahsoka could breathe underwater. Hey, uh, <laughs> Drew, Drew's got a bailout. You got a new show, Drew. I'm sorry we got like waited till this to talk about. Oh, it, you guys are good. I got a, yeah, I got a rollout. I got like three shows to do tonight. Got a new show called Unauthorized with Drew Hernandez. Shout out to everyone that has been supporting on Censored.tv. You guys can go check out that use promo code drew for 20 percent off you'll find me on rumble.com backslash drew hernandez i host a bunch of shows over there as well salute gary thank you for Love having you, me man i want to stay another hour but i got some shows coming up in like seven minutes so Drew's the man awesome. i love the man, man. Love you, prequel brother. forever gary prequel <laughs> forever gary no matter what prequels are fine you underestimate my power prequels are the goats Favorite no. Star Wars movie well, is well, Revenge of the Sith. Favorite, they can favorite be your favorite, favorite Star Wars movies. They're just not the best. Ah, uh, no, no. Empire's the best. Empire's the best. Yeah. Empire's the best. Return Thank of the you. Jedi is more of a prequel movie than I'll give you that. In the original trilogy, it's more of a prequel movie than than an OT movie. So there you go. All right, guys. I love you. I'm a jam. Take it easy. Bye, Bye, Love you all. Chat. Hail to the chat. Peace out. Later. Yeah, sure. Drew's awesome, Peace. guys. Make sure you go support him. He's yeah, he's awesome, dude. Him. He's it's a awesome. good dude. Uh, YouTube doesn't like him very much. <laughs> no, they don't. Ah, <laughs> uh, YouTube is going to be a fun place over the next uh, couple of years. Oh We're see boy! How yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. what do you guys think of that uh, that ad situation changing uh, in November? I haven't heard your opinion on that. I think so it's they're shit. Forcing, they're forcing more ads onto people. We aren't going to be able to remove them. So if you uh, if you do a video, if you make a video and you upload it, you have the option to place the ads where you like or remove them and have none, have no mid rolls or anything. They are taking that away for us. They're they're doing it. They for can the do creator. it. Yeah, they can do it. Uh, no, they're going to do it. And we, they're taking all the power away from us. Uh, I think I that. Up. I think that uh, you should go follow all of us on Rumble. Um, that's what I think. Uh, did you? So things are crazy right now. I got a hate speech community guidelines warning on an unlisted stream from three years ago that was for my premium members during a Call of Duty stream where it was me, Ryan was there, Lethal Lightning, and a lot of the girls on the team. We were all doing private lobbies. Lethal said at the timestamp they gave me the hate, hate speech for, Lethal Lightning says, all right, I guess I'm going to join the girls team. And I said, oh, Mr. I hate women is going to join the girls team. Ha, ha, ha. They gave me a hate speech <laughs> community guidelines warning and rejected my appeal. So oh, my point is being is that insane. YouTube is, and that's a bot. It's clearly a bot that's, because yeah. it was it was a stream with less than 100 views on it, unlisted, and yeah. three years old. Wow. My point being is that it's going to get worse and it's taking the you they're just continuing to take the you out of youtube That's really yeah so uh to. we got hit with a bunch of uh copyright claims mm -hmm. out of nowhere on friday night tights episodes from two years ago two and a half years ago so yeah some new bot has rolled out and that usually happens something's going on for well, sure i think it goes to show that they're probably desperate for money so they need it and that's how they make their monies off of these ads well, obviously shorts didn't really work out the way they wanted yeah, to well, they're yeah. supplementing. it's kind of funny how it works so they're they're ensuring that they continue to make money and uh, yeah it sucks that it's being forced upon us but well, they also probably heard the news that they're being watched on a lot more tvs they're being watched by a lot more they're being watched more than television now and it you know they were business mm -hmm. and they decided yep. well let's take advantage of that i, well, I mean guess also... what if you if you make a video that's less than eight minutes you don't have to worry about mid-roll ads about <laughs> that, that is true that is very true, true. they're also I'm starting to like 16 minutes line up like who they're you know what i mean who the bad people are who they're gonna like they're pre-censoring probably they're probably figuring out like all right who, yeah. who's gonna be a problem do you remember uh, a few months ago when they went hey you can say what you want about the coof and 
politics. election and all that, yeah. And then <laughs> and that wasn't a bait at all to uh, to bring out who the uh, accounts were going to be that they're going to be hammering. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they yeah. were way. They said that just so people like turn the camera on. Hey, guess what happened in 2020, motherfuckers? And they're like, yep. <laughs> Here, got I got I'm just surprised <laughs> other content creators like didn't complain about this ad change because it's it's terrible. It's yeah, freaking terrible. Yeah. They can they can, you, you know how they can deboost one of your videos? They could just flood it full of ads. Are, they can put yeah. ten uh, ad breaks in there. Yeah. So are okay. they actually? I, I guess yeah. I need to look closer at it. Are they actually going to like not letting you have any flexibility, or are they just not letting you take them out and you have to put some in there? Okay. My understanding was is that they are taking control of pre-roll ads at the beginning of a video and the end of the in video. The end, I'm, that's what I, am yeah. I wrong about that? Because I thought we still had the freedom to choose C where correct. the mid ads were. I, that's the way I interpret it, to be honest with you. Maybe I have to read closer, but yeah, that's what I thought was that they are, you're no longer going to be able to deselect pre or post roll ads, mm -hmm. but you're still going to have the same flexibility for mid rolls, but it still I sucks. I mean, I guess. Well, yeah. I mean, if you if you make a video that you don't want to monetize I, and you want no ads on yeah. or, or something like that, well, now YouTube's taking that away. They want to monetize every single bit of content that's on there, even stuff that you might not want to. Well, exactly. They've been doing that. Even oh, if well, you, like, yeah, if they've you been monetize, doing they that already. That, ads anyway. That's what I don't understand. They've been doing it. They've been running ads on videos that aren't monetized. They're just not giving it to you. Right. Yeah. Anyway. And that's that's so, the fucked up thing. I, I don't really it. see any difference. <laughs> We had a video, the last Witcher video. They didn't put any ads on it yep. at all, but there were ads on it. Like you could <laughs> yeah. see ads. I went to my other channel and saw the ads, but yeah, uh, yeah. I went my they're back, not, and they're not sharing them with you. Which I went and looked at my analytics. There was no ads on it. So, and yeah. and they do that with the demonetized channels too. So yes. they do. That, that happened recently. Ah. That happened recently with a channel in the sword community, Metatron. His yeah. whole channel got completely demonetized. Mm -hmm. And while it was demonetized, ads were still appearing on his videos, and YouTube was taking 100% of the revenue. It's yeah, scummy. somebody is a oh, fucking that's, 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 what, that's what they said they, they can do. That's what they said they will do. Hey, ass. Mm. Go to bed. Okay. <laughs> You're sick, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Love you, as. See you. Love you, as. Sleep well, as. Well, sleep, the, the sleep. fucked up thing about it is the whole thing with the YouTube partnership program is the idea that whenever they demonetize you, they're saying that nobody wants to put ads against your video. But when they do it, they're basically lying to you. And what somebody needs to do that's been demonetized like that is fucking sue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the, tried. The, the whole the whole demonetized thing was that this content is not advertiser friendly. Exactly. Freaking advertiser friendly. Why are you putting ads on it, you hypocrites? Yes. You're just, you're just doing it to screw the creators and what they're doing. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what oh, happens after. He's already out. asleep. He's already asleep. He's already Too asleep. Late, yeah. He's already out. <laughs> he was. I was I was doing the real BBC with him. He was freaking sweating. Uh, he was so <laughs> sick. He was so sick. And I'm like, That's so bad. all I could think about was like, I'm gonna be sick for the rest of my trip. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, lo love him. Hey, uh, Shad, you went through a little thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was unbelievable, dude. You want to yeah. tell people what happened? Yeah, tell us about your thing. Know. Yeah, so I met thing. up with. Uh, uh, a whole heap, uh, a group of uh, creators from the community, the sword um, uh, to do a collaboration day where we're going to do a whole heap of videos, each for our early digital channels. We got there and we had a great time, friendship, laughter. We got along, made videos, brilliant. Right. Uh, and so the day later that we took photos of the day and posted them on social media. And so couple of them got concern trolled because I am such a problematic person, you see. Wow. And, and uh, you know, that, that was people telling us, do you have any idea what Shad says on his other channel? And it's complete bull crap. It, it's like uh, people go to the videos where supposedly I've said these horrible things. They watch it. It's like, you said nothing re like offensive there. It's just a, and so they love to vilify you, take you out of context and exaggerate anything you mm -hmm. say to be the, the worst thing ever. And they misquote you and everything like that. And uh, yeah, there was uh, a YouTuber, Scholar Gardatoria, Matt Easton, who I've, uh, you know, I've 
I've uh, associated with for many years. We've had back and forth, disagreements and agreements and everything like that. And uh, he he, uh, he uh, decided that he had to basically completely disassociate, excommunicate, excommunicate myself from his association completely with a Facebook post sharing it. And I woke That's up so like, gay. yeah, it was, it was really cowardly, honestly. Um, didn't reach out for context to talk to me or anything like that. And they never uh, do. Yeah. And it's a standard that I find morally repugnant. It's like if you, because this is the thing, right? I know he associates with people who hold my same standards, other conservatives, okay? And so the thing that we're trying to make this grandstand where, uh, you know, th these views are so bad that I could not associate with someone. Well, that's actually a lie. The, the main issue is it's that I'm outspoken about them. Okay, mm -hmm. he was fine with me being a conservative so long I was I remained in the closet and I don't make waves by stating very bland, run of the mill, and I mean bland. Like I'm I'm not an extreme right. I'm actually far more centrist in my views in my conservative Christian views and stuff like that. And so I find it amazing if people have a problem with me. Okay, where I'm so damn bled and I'm too extreme. It's like, holy crap, you guys just have no tolerance at all for anything that is so mildly right of center. It, it's mm -hmm. crazy. Uh, but because bigoted. I'm outspoken, yeah, but because I'm outspoken about it, right? That, and I, and therefore, I've upset people. Well, the, he was afraid of the mob. That's, that's, that's yep. where it comes from. Wow. Wow. What well, could it be a normal guy from 10 years ago, Shad? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's and, ridiculous, uh, man. This is so common. It's not even about mm. you. This guy could still really like you, but it's like it's this performative uh grandstanding, yes. like like he's yeah. trying to raise his ESG score with who? For what? His it's audience. A lot of it is that you see it with like the bread tubers. If you're not extreme enough, they're gonna go after you. And, and it's the same thing here. And this is what happens is. when you fear your audience. Well, and they're gonna come after him eventually anyway. I yep. mean, if, that, oh, yeah. if that's the way it is, then the, then you've already let the wolf in the yeah, door. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. This is why the fellowship, the 199, is such a great place. It, it is. Like, all like you that. guys just came, rallied in support, and I really appreciate it, everyone. And it's so upsetting because it was completely unnecessary. He, he was literally, like, he's afraid that it would affect his business and his YouTube channel and everything like oh, that from so being great. associated with me. And but I'm then, like, dude, dude, you... Like, you think you could get attacked for being associated with me? All right. How much do you think I get attacked? Like, like how much people try and have canceled me, lie about me, hit pieces and all that stuff. Vastly more than you could ever be even thought of because only true morons think associating and spending time with people means yep. you endorse their views. That is what yeah. Also, like, how fragile... How fragile do you think your brand is that your business is yes. that that just dealing with you, collabing with you mm. from time to time is enough to just break everything? It, exactly. Seriously. And the contrast, right? I'm outspoken about my views. I get attacked left, right, and center. And you know what? My apolitical channel, Shadowversity, it's doing fine. Well, fine in retrospect to the other creators in the because uh, that type of content over the board, over, across the board, is actually struggling. But when you compare my views to like other channels of similar size and stuff like that, I'm still getting the same level of I like, because I actually get the most views in this community. Uh, though Metatron's doing great, he is really taken off, and so all power to him. I wish you all the success in the world, right? Um, but I'm I'm still getting the same level of views in terms of percentage rate compared to a lot of the other creators as I always have. Uh, everyone in this community has been suffering under the YouTube algorithm short bullcrap and all that stuff, right? But I cannot see any discernible damage in terms of viewership and growth on Shadowversity from being attacked left, right, and center from insane, ideologically driven nutcases. And that's me. And all he had to do was ignore the the outrage mob, which was a tiny group of people. Like It was probably 10 people or something that was just yeah. concerned trolling him or something like that. It, or, like barely any. And if he just ignored it, it would have been wow. nothing. But then he decided to throw me under the bus completely. Like what he said about me, it's pretty disgusting. He he in 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 the, in the post that he put on Facebook, he literally brands me a bigot, sexist, racist, homophobe. But I'm like, you like wow. where are the you point out the quotes where I say anything remotely right. close wow. to that? Like, well, it's they don't need proof. They just need the yes. accusation. That's how these yeah, people yes. operate. 
He's just exactly. like any corporation. I mean, all the corporations yeah. act upon the the words of this random Twitter mob that's not actually like made up of uh, a large mm-hmm. amount of any real people, and yet they yeah. they lose a lot of money from it. So he's yeah. he's probably lost more people because of this and what oh. he did to you versus what he would have <laughs> yes. had had you well, stayed fresh. Mm-hmm. Specifically, because there is something that I think we like everyone needs to basically stand up and say no, no, this type of behavior is not okay and it's the disassociating excommunicating people for just having bland views that are different uh, on, I, I, once upon a time you could come together and join these like swords uh, and the interest on shadow versus is the thing that brings people together you could nerd out and it was a unifying thing and it didn't didn't matter if you were left right race whatever these were unifying things right and you could get along based on those common interests now the world has gone so insane that if you're an outspoken conservative like me oh no you must be excommunicado and and that's where it's like no no, no if you're gonna wow. do that you like that is a type of intolerance that we cannot accept because that's what's dividing the world in insane ways and so i was like all right uh, he wanted to make this public i will i just screen capped his entire thing with the full context and then shared my thoughts on it and i didn't make a video on it i just posted on my social medias and uh, people have it's easy to see who's in the right and who's in the wrong in that situation and people have responded accordingly yeah that was um, very chinese of him to do hey <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> she didn't say Canadian. I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, he's a coward. That's all he is. He's a he's yeah. a coward, yeah. and and unfortunately, we are we are beholden to cowards uh, a lot. Uh, people just wanting to take the path of least resistance, and uh, th- that's unfortunately it's fear based and mm-hmm. and comic said earlier he fears his audience well i mean you shouldn't have yeah. to fear your audience you know like yes. the, well this is one, the problem yeah. when you cultivate that ideology yeah. in your you know your community or whatnot because isn't some like collective okay it's not some collective of single thought uh exactly. most people tune in i want to know about sword shit and guess what you're going to have right left center whatever commies whatever you're talking about swords for that guy to go out there and drag you publicly like that without talking to you first, especially oh. when you just, like, and without stuff. tagging you too, oh, mm-hmm. it's so That's small big. dick energy, man. Yeah, yeah, it is. It was very small energy. energy. And yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that guy guy energy. Energy. butter knife. Yeah. <laughs> so butter knife. A, ho- a hobbit's knife yeah. interview. And <laughs> I don't expect everyone to have this same stand as me, but look, I'm actually I'm willing to forgive the guy. Uh, the thing is, though, he for for me to try and move forward in friendship with him my hand is extended but he needs to reach his hand back and part of that is it, like being willing to just get along with me and associate with me in public like that okay because he made it a public thing to begin with to say some horrible things about me it's like well no if you actually want to move forward now it's up to you to change and you need to do like literally fix like be uh, come out and actually show true tolerance where yeah, you he, say, he used to yeah. apologize too for what yes, he did. Yes. yes. Well, yes. A, a man, a man would have called you directly exactly yeah. Yeah. This behind the scenes yeah. and then explained all that stuff, but we're not dealing with a man here. Well, I, I well, think what it comes down to is it shows you how much he cares about you. Cause if you're not willing to reach out and say, Hey dude, there's some stuff that's happening. That's concerning me. And he just ghosts you. It just shows that he really didn't care to begin with. No. Yeah. And like uh, we've had disagreements that's in the past. Here. Yeah, we, we've had disagreements in the past, but vastly overall, everything has been vastly more positive, and especially recently, where we both gave each other shout outs on our channels, we're building each other up. But of course, I mean, when I recommend his channel, that gives him vastly more benefit than him recommending wow. because there's a much smaller channel than me, right? And especially just a few days ago, we got along great, right? And so there's been vastly over the whole majority was friendship and that's all i've ever extended towards him kindness and friendship and then he basically just spat that you know spat in my face uh, as a result of it which is pretty pretty despicable pathetic and yeah and look, you, you guys actually... stole the t shad did he misgender mm. anybody while you guys were hanging out <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. it was it, like i said we got along great when he when he saw me met me he gave me a big old hug all right like you know we were like meeting old friends and then and then well, it seemed like that was that meant nothing. And it Chad, was are you a Did much he... bigger channel than him? Oh, vastly so. Vastly I feel so. like he was using you, and then when mm-hmm. he started to feel yep. like he was getting got all he could from you, and 
built himself up and he's like, oh, well, I just have to answer the call of my audience. I This is a superficial friendship, if any, to begin mm-hmm. with. Yeah. And and so, look, he has reached out to me after the fact and the messages sent me rung very hollow, very, very hollow, uh, especially because <laughs> they, they, yeah, they, they, they con- there's yeah. A, a couple of things that contradict flat what he has said publicly. And so... Uh, yeah, if, you know, if he's will listen, yeah. if he it's like you said, Shad. Yeah. If he's willing to say some of the things he said in private in public in terms of, you know, want to make things right or whatever, that's one thing. If he only says yes. it in private, it means nothing. It means yeah. nothing. It means nothing. And so mm. uh, it did not encourage me to even but because most of it was simply him trying to justify himself. And it's like to me, that is yeah, it's it's not justify. It was, it was beyond the pale what he did. And mm. uh, and so I'm I'm not going to deal with someone who does not even see he, like what he thinks what he did was wrong, and uh, and so I have very little patience. For low it. character, yeah. man. It shows yeah. low character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're right, Garrett. I mean, it's just a basic human value, uh, mm-hmm. and I think Chrissy's right. I think he was just he was just social climbing, clout chasing, fucking piece of shit. So uh, you're a nice guy, Shad. I don't have to be a nice guy. Fuck that guy. He's a turtle. Yeah. Coward. Watch uh, out for that sword community. You might get a dagger in the back. <laughs> oh, what you the did back. there, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan coming in strong. That's good. <laughs> I have to it's go like you guys hear recently Sean Penn came out and like out of nowhere was like <laughs> yeah. in reference to the slap. He was like, oh, and then somehow brought it back to Russia and Zelensky just out of nowhere used it as an opportunity to like let everyone know where he's at politically. I, really, that, he said if Zelensky had been down. there, there wouldn't yeah. have been a slap. Uh. That kind of reminds me of what this guy did to Shad. It's like just so unnecessary. I don't know who he thinks he's getting and, points from. Well, and also, boy, was it like a, it was him hitting himself because the sword community, you might be not surprised about this. There's a lot of right leaning people who enjoy swords, right? And him coming yeah, out and why. saying that he wants to completely disassociate for me from my very honestly bland conservative religious views right what that means is is that he thinks anyone who has these views are too vile and despicable to even associate with and so my response when i hear that is that how dare you accept the viewership and support of anyone who holds similar views to me then when you think we are so despicable and uh, and uh, th- he was the one who said that uh, so he set that standard and as a result, I, I just let people decide for themselves. But there's a lot of people who are seeing that, oh, is this what you really think about a good portion of your own audience, is it? It's... And so my response was to try and make let everyone knows in, in no uncertain terms that re- whoever you are, regardless of your political beliefs, left, right, and everything like that, you are welcome to watch my content. You, I will happily associate with you. I, like I, one, one of one of my like guys I work with, who's now a, like a primary host on Shadowversity, is a really left leaning guy, and he's brilliant. I love him. Uh, you know, this is Nate on the channel, and we get along great. Okay, of course I will associate and be friends with people because so like uh, in the end of the day, it's how people treat in other people in person that I re- that really is the larger measure on if they're decent people or not. And and political views are a, a lower gauge. It is a gauge. I'm not saying it isn't, but it's a lower gauge in terms of what people, you know, how good they are really internally. And so people are welcome to watch my content regardless of their views. And I appreciate everyone for their support. Really do. Cheers. You're a good guy. Yeah, uh, yeah 100%. Really Sorry you're going fuck, through this, Chad. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, fuck these people. Fuck they, fuck they, they, yeah, they don't, they, they don't care. They're never going to care. And, um, there's never there's never a, a lot like it, whenever somebody shows you that side of them then you just need to try your best to kind of disconnect because it will there, there's there's always going to find something else to be fake offended over when you let the mob kind of determine your relationships or friendships um you're a broken person at that point in time and um yeah i mean this one like everybody you know i've talked about it recently but like obviously recipes to uche a lot of people didn't like uche because of his opinions and all that uh, uche like very few people with his far left wing views would actually want to be publicly associated to me okay 
And and the fact is that he was he cool had a lot of business. NFL buddies that didn't like what we said on Sports Wars. Uh, yes, he did. He <laughs> took a lot of shit. He took a lot of shit from his inner circle and his friends, but he always, you know, had our back. And yeah, you can tell show me all the retarded shit he said on social media. A lot. But the bottom line is yes. he still always had no problem being publicly affiliated with me and Ryan for good God for all the shit Ryan's. Well, done. it just shows you, you know? his character. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I love Uche to death. You know, he has a lot of bad takes, but he was a good guy. And it's yeah. a shame that he's not here with us anymore. Yeah, 100 percent. But, you know, like Shada talked about this whole thing that you went through uh, a few days ago on my stream. And um, it, it happened to me when I first started telling like privately the people that. We're on my team before I, you know, got a prominent following privately. They knew I was a Trump supporter. I didn't talk about it publicly because I didn't feel like that was necessary until I started to see the political climate change. When I publicly said I was a Trump supporter, they all quit G and G mm -hmm. and they told everybody I was a racist and a sexist. Now these are people I knew personally, mm -hmm. but their inner circle wouldn't allow them to be connected to me publicly. So that's when they had to kind of go on the, the offense, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of paint me as this way. And it's like six people, six or seven wow. people uh, all yeah. simultaneously just grouped together. They're like, he's going to tell everybody he's a Trump supporter. But anyone who stuck around, you know? you're like, hey, so, yes. Yes, unfortunately, Odin's still here. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking more about like some of the high scenes people. I know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you. <laughs> hey, I'm uh, still talking about inflation Odin, on the channel, still, you know. Just let Odin stop tagging me on all his fucking videos when I finally brought him on. He used to tag me in every hey, fucking man, video. Hey, man, I just made hey. this great video. You should check it out. <laughs> I, I want to talk about it. something good. Something that Jeremy and Flash led me to that I've been adoring and actually watching it kind of on repeat right now. And that's one piece. One yes. piece is I, so, fucking awesome. Yes. Uh, for yes. people who do, who aren't aware of one piece or even the Netflix show and type of thing, Gary, I think we just need to share that scene that we watched together. That just made us all go. Whoa. Oh yes. And, yes. Which scene? It's, uh, Which scene? So, so it's the scene between the kids f sword fighting, the, the girls Zorro. sword fighting, the boys. And, oh, yeah, and yes. Sorry's backstory. And, yep. and, and I've seen, so I have seen, I didn't see the, I watched a little bit of the anime. Shout out to Kristen Ova. She was very adamant about me watching One Piece. So she made me watch a little bit of the anime before I watched the live action. So I had a, at least a, at least I had some knowledge on the characters um before i watched the live action so after i watched the live action now i've gone back to the anime and i've seen that scene in the anime which has even more context within the anime really? they did it okay. fucking perfectly they did oh it's so good go ahead though let's let's talk about that surprisingly so, based so, scene yeah, yeah like like shockingly so so young zoro it has a rival as a kid and it's a girl and she's always beating him and he can't stand it and he challenges her to a duel with real swords and she wins again and he can't stand it and so she uh, turns around and basically start and i sorry this part i can't quote exactly but she basically starts to say you know i'm beating you now but you're gonna grow up and you're gonna become stronger you're gonna get your arms will get longer and 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 she describes basically that yeah boys they start to get an inherent advantage and then she ends with this law these these lines and she says girls can beat boys but no Men. woman can ever yes. beat a man yes yes and, and then the in the anime, the dad point blank tells her that when she's convinced that she's going to take over, he goes, "No, you can't. You're a girl." Ooh. You're not gonna Damn. be able to do this. As you get older, it won't happen. And she got pissed. Yes. But yeah. yeah. Um, but then the, the show like also handles it really well because the boy, when he hears that, he's like, Well, no, that kind of sucks. I think you have to like you shouldn't give up either, though. And then he starts encouraging her back. And and so it actually does acknowledge the the natural gender dynamic between men and women. And, and then it, it shows goes, egalitarianism right at the end so, so this yeah. is like an anti-nihilism show that's yeah. what this is <laughs> absolutely no, yeah it's the most yeah. positive show the, the luffy is the no most oh, the complete opposite of nihilism like if you character. look up the opposite of it it's yeah, yeah. It's it's luffy. Luffy. yeah. he's so confident <laughs> and he's like i'm gonna be the pirate king like that's all I, luffy, there's nothing you can say that can stop me great luffy actor doing awesome, luffy, yeah. luffy, yeah. luffy in a lot of ways represents gary running friday night tights he don't know how the fuck <laughs> it's gonna happen but it's gonna happen know what the plan is we're not sure if it's even going to happen but we're gonna try and it always usually ends up working so <laughs> but yeah so okay so 
One Piece is based off of an anime, the most uh, popular anime in the world, the, the best-selling manga of all time, which is One Piece. It The anime has like a thousand or 15 seasons or something, or something like that it's, it's crazy it's huge yeah, yeah there's crazy. a lot of cartoons and to it i was not aware of this i, I did episodes. not understand i didn't grasp how big one piece was and like i said when Chris was telling me about it and i was like well how big she goes it's just as it's as big as dragon ball i'm like what and she Dang. goes yeah like it's, it's it's as big as dragon ball i'm like that's crazy to me so anyway um i watched the first few episodes of of the anime and I really enjoyed the the first episode was fine. I remember the second episode really grabbing me of the anime. And then, just, you know, a few more. I'm like, okay, at least I understand the world and what we're doing. So then I watched the live action. And it just, I don't know what it is, man. Um, the, the only thing I said as a criticism is I wish that we got a little more of the adventure element in the live action because it feels like we move from point A to point B really quickly. We don't get like that time on the water. We don't get the adventure element of like showing them go from, but I get it. You know what I mean? They had to run through it and that's what the anime is for. It gives you a lot more perspective on it, but the characters are fantastic in the live action. Yep. Uh, Luffy, like everybody says, Luffy is just, you can't help but to love the guy. I mean, you just, you're connected mm -hmm. to him and then you're introduced to the other characters, Zoro and Nami, um, Sanji, which is really cool. And Sanji has even more backstory in the anime um, and it makes more sense with everything because it's a little sudden how it happens in live action. Um, uh, and uh, Usopp, I think is his name, or Usopp, I can't remember how to say his name. It's Usopp. But, you so, saw, so. I think I always mess this one up, but he's he's great too. Like all the characters yeah. have their own backstory. Um, it intertwines that. I think it's episode three. It's kind of almost like feels like a horror movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, like, yeah. like that's when I it started to grab me. Where okay, this show is achieving a surprising level of dramatic mm -hmm. tension that I was not thinking its lighthearted nature was capable of, and yes. I was starting to get hooked at that point. I was like, yes. this show is doing some really Interesting. Well, simultaneously, well, the one, the one thing that grabbed me was the fact that it was able to go and pull off the anime silliness in right. live action exactly. and not have it be come off as completely stupid. Because it easily <laughs> could have. I was, we were watching the yes. show, and I was like, "Are they acting? Are they overacting on purpose?" And, and not and they're actually like, underacting the, in some elements. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like there's a easy, there's a fine line between acting the way they are in this movie where it's a little heightened and it's stylized and being very cringe and overacting and just being on like getting on your nerves but they ride that line so perfectly in this show and they set up the weirdest stuff and you kind of just accept it a lot of the times Yo, like yeah. it, ex it, it explains what it needs to explain to you well, but then sometimes it just presents you with things like a guy that's half a goat and you go okay because yeah, the yeah, world I around it you've kind of accepted that and you you it a dude with an axe for yeah. a hand. I mean, yeah. it, that's yes. it's something I'd that say, could potentially fail in live action. What well, it does really well that helps you helps kind of balance out against the goofiness. It handles power scale really mm -hmm. well and really consistently. And as soon as you have kind of a point of reference that you're gauging things against, suddenly there's stakes yes. that you can get invested in, and that's really important. And so. Yeah, the goofiness is there, but they're being consistent with the goofiness, and that's just good oh, work. Well, it it's works for the world, right? It's, it's, it's the idea it. that you establish something in the world and you make it real, and that's what they've done. The silliness in the show is basically a part of the world, and they yeah. make it live and breathe, and that's what makes it work. What makes and, it work is the character work. All right, that's the character work. I, yeah, again, I didn't see the anime. I read a couple of volumes of the manga because uh, somebody was kind enough to send them to me. And the story was great, not big on the art. But uh, so without anime of, as reference, I felt this thing was paced perfectly. Like it, yeah. it is some of the best character work mm -hmm. I've seen in live action in years, yeah. maybe a decade. Like it's yeah. phenomenal character work. And it's great actors, great storytelling, mm -hmm. fantastic editing. The fish eye, I was talking to uh, Mark. Oh, that was know, great. Was yeah, Mark. About it. I thought it could be annoying and I agreed with them, but it turns out it works. It's very Gilliam. Uh, and when you buy into characters and you actually give a shit, you don't need to subvert expectations. You don't, everything in here is kind of predictable. It's a pretty basic story in this really insane, fantastic world, but it's grounded by the characters. That's mm -hmm. what drives absolutely everything. That's what Disney star Wars is missing. That's what Disney Marvel is missing. 
not, none of their characters have personalities. You can't help but like Luffy. Uh, you, you, this should be, by all accounts, an annoying as hell character. Yes. That oh, should, yeah. Yes, absolutely. 100%. It's the yeah. prototypical annoying manga <laughs> character. Yep. Yeah. He, yeah he well, well, hey, like, to, on that point, yeah. we're literally taking these fucking weirdos seriously with Marine on their hat. It's so stupid. Yeah, looking. I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Like, they have Marine, and, and that's just like it is in the anime, by the way. But, like, they're walking around, and it says Marine. And they're like, it's the worst it looking uniforms, like, but it works so because you, Bart, somehow Bart, you buy awesome. into it. It's just kind of all the parts make the puzzle work. Yes. Even when Garp is with Kobe, right? You know, he's not this dick. He's, he just wants to be kind of a father figure. He's just into his Marine thing, you know, you know, <laughs> so it's like it, there, there's so many levels to, to, all, to even the bad guys. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, that, like even a uh, buggy, the clown, you can tell, like, you know, obviously he was Buggy too, was yeah. Buggy. yeah. So, uh, what's uh, what's the what's the pirate? The, what's the guy's name? Sanji's uh, is that Zeph? Is that his name? Z Sanji, yeah, the, the 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 you know, he was the pirate with the one leg. Is it yeah. Zeph? Is that his yeah. name? Somebody, he, he was fantastic. Looking great, and I was dude. thinking he was just going to be this completely unlikable guy, and it turned out like you felt the whole you know, not not going to super specifics on it, but. Yeah, like, the panel on that one was unbelievable. Oh my God, that was like right. Yeah, yeah. So it's really episode seven. I, episode I seven was so fucking good. The end yes. of episode seven was so fucking good. Yes. Uh, it, it, I don't know how you stopped watching. Shad, we Shad I and I had watching at that point, and <laughs> after you left, I'm like, fuck it, I'm watching the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ryan, are you gonna watch? Gotten... <laughs> there, there is a moment again. There, there, there is a powerful moment when a female character desperately and sincerely asks for help from a male character, and there's the heroic moment where the answer is, "Of course, I will." And and you you really see that in modern storytelling, and it, uh, it's just uh, well, so... and the stuff with uh, with Luffy's father figure, all that was great hero, like oh, classical yeah. hero storytelling. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we just don't get that these days, and it's great well, to finally the, get the something hero like worship that. too, which yeah. you don't really see anymore. And it's like the idea of yeah. hero worship wanting to make you be a better person. Can we talk about the best character in the show, though? And it is Mihawk. Mihawk is the best show. Oh, yeah, the best character yeah. in the show. Dave Navarro, dude. Yeah, he's like, he's like, uh, yeah, he does look like Dave Navarro. <laughs> <laughs> but like when he's walking around with that giant sword, and you're yeah. like, yeah. what is this? It he's was so like, fascinating. He's so I, fascinating. I, I like generally, genuinely, his introduction and one thing. This is uh, this is something that that's, doesn't happen heaps in anime because anime that like if you have like a super epic swordsman, usually they're always using the katana and like you know yes, Zoro uses the katana and so I just found it refreshing from an anime source where the greatest swords in the world is actually using a, well, a very exaggerated fantasy version of a medieval messer like mm. Krieg's messer and it's like. Cool. Like, it's just it's just novel for me. I got an appreciation. But then the fact the way he carries himself and the pale power scale, it was done so well where he's introduced as one of the Lord Pirates, right? And you find out he is just so vastly more powerful than anyone there even. And and that's that was that was so good and useful and humbling because it shows that you know these hero characters that we're following. They're, they're so far a lot through the episodes they're basically kicking ass and they're really tough and really powerful and then the show just you know pulls out the run from under just let you know that yeah you think they're tough they're not even close yeah. to the level of what people are in this world and it was that was very effective just to get getting up. started exactly mm -hmm. that the projection of what you want to see these characters achieve and also the vast difference uh, and again it was power scaling done perfectly we're getting perfectly. a season two which is fantastic to hear that's good yeah another thing and that yeah. i really enjoyed about the the show too for for me a lot of things I, I enjoy seeing really good production quality and the sets the costumes the props were all very very well done there's a great shot and i think in season uh, in episode three no episode four it's the culmination when you you see the, the boat on the shipyard yep. and that shipyard it's massive and yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they're doing you yes. know set extensions, but a lot of that is actually there, and mm. it it blows every Disney Marvel show, every Disney <laughs> Star Wars show out of the water because you it doesn't feel like it's in the void. It doesn't feel like it's a in a the fake. volume. It, it it's really there. 
it, it's void it, is a better it, name for it. I think the void they, is a they much call better it both. Name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The volume. Yeah, the void. Well, the, the one thing too that like kind of gives me hope, yeah, yeah. sadly. <laughs> Uh, is, is the stretching effects that makes me think that they could actually pull off a proper Mr. Fantastic without it looking completely goofy because yeah, the stretching uh, in the show is great. It, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah if they cool. actually made it made it right. Marvel really, was sold to somebody who could actually make a movie. Right. Let's talk about let's talk about the controversy. There's a big controversy surrounding the show. Uh, apparently, very toxic, racist, sexist, but they included the creator. Oh, I know, I know, I know. That's a crazy move. I, I I probably shouldn't have brought it to that level. I apologize. Yeah, but th yeah, they they had the the creator it helped with the show. What what a toxic show! Like no, I know show. that's such such a bad idea. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> like it, it's bizarre and and also fresh because like so many of us have been saying if you're adapting something, the source material mm -hmm. is good for a reason. Follow the source material. Listen to the original creator and. And no one has done it for so long. And finally, someone said, and look, look at how it turns out. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you know, you know? And, yes. and he had real power. Like, yeah. uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, th that wasn't the case with Cowboy Bebop uh -huh. or The Lister. Things probably would have been different. Now, uh, do we think this is anomaly or, you know, like this, this is a massive hit, by the way. We're still talking about it. It came out 16 days ago. So yeah. this is yeah. a time where our next Netflix series is completely forgotten. And this is one of those stranger things. Wednesday, people are going nuts over the show. And, you know, when, when Mahler came on, you know, because I asked him to watch an episode for Real BBC. And, and I kind of thought he would hate it. So he's he watched <laughs> it. He, he fired it up one at night before he went to bed. And he ended up watching the entire series. All in one. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. That's what my chat uh, yeah. told me. I think, what I was talking about. Man. I was like, hell yeah. Hell I think there's yeah. a lot of people that are, because I went into it thinking, oh, this looks so stupid. This is going to be horrible. Yeah, All really of these didn't. other, no, it did not. All of these other Netflix adaptations have been complete shit. This is going to suck. And then we were watching it in the UK and I was like, okay. I kind of like this. <laughs> All right. I like it. And then the more you watch it, the more you kind of it attaches and you really like it. It was yeah. pretty cool. Uh, all of us watching it together. Yeah, that was awesome. That I, was, yeah. Uh, I've I'll never read the I, manga or watched the, the anime for it. And I am totally invested in the show. I want to go yeah. and check out the other stuff now. Because yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. So basically like everything. And we'll yeah. read more of the manga. It's all everything happening. Everything that you see in the show is basically just like they take the anime and they, they kind of kind of dwindle down those stories uh so there's a lot and that's just part of it but you get so much more context and there are slight differences obviously and, and again i'm not too far into it i've jumped around a lot based on the recommendations um but you're, you're getting more context out of the stories that you've already seen plus uh, again it's over a thousand episodes so yeah that's um, pretty ridiculous probably gonna be some filler I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, no, from what no, I we... understand, there's a lot of filler from what I understand. So, yeah. well, this Sounds like the you know, right. typical anime. I've heard there's seasons right. you can actually skip. Though, if Netflix really wants to make this a big thing, it has so much source material to draw from. And if they can consistently make every season as good as this first one, and that's a simple matter of remaining true to the source material, listening to the creator, this thing could go massive. Like this That would is... be a first for Netflix. It would be, yeah. Yeah, it would yeah. be yeah. like... We well, haven't seen him be very consistent. That's true. I, I think that, well, I mean, one thing we're seeing consistently is with anime and manga is, I mean, these, these properties are massive and a lot of us aren't even aware of it. I mean, uh, I've watched my, a little bit of anime. I'm nowhere near a knowledgeable anime fan by any stretch of the imagination, but there's so much out there. And a lot of it is because it doesn't get a lot of the identity politics B BS that, and that's why so many people are turning to it because it's just good storytelling and there's no agenda involved. Um, and that's why so many people are turning to it. And there is a, a the problem is, and this is the scary thing. Anytime anything over here in the West gets popular. So it starts to get ruined yes. by all this yeah. shit. Like I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, as much as I would love to see like a GI Joe, like become relevant and everything, I kind of don't want it to get. Yeah. The, right. I, yeah. Maybe it needs to stay not popular because the worst thing something can do is become popular right now, because the more popular something becomes, the more it's going to be ruined by these freaks. And I would rather Badly. just not get a lot of GI Joe than to get it ruined and, and destroyed Jeremy, by all these weirdos. You, 
Jeremy, you'd be much more likely to get a the, like the IDW version of GI Joe than I know. with the overweight the black female yeah, that's leading body it. positive. Yeah. Uh, yes. So hey, we'll the see, Chuck we'll Dixon see run two. was fantastic from IDW. The rest of it after that kind of fall apart. Yep. Well, we'll see when season two comes out if it'll have that kind of when a popular show comes out, season two comes out, and it's all woke and shit. So we'll yeah, that's what I'm worried I'm about sh- is the season two sure curse. Fucking happen. Also, that's when Ryan the- will start watching. He'll be like, "Let's bitch about <laughs> this." Time. Let's go. <laughs> hey, hey, I, in Ryan's defense, he's way too busy writing Ahsoka. So. <laughs> 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 Just telling you, I, I know how Dave Filoni thinks. I've hated the man for 15 years. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> hey, I gave you your props, Ryan, on open bar last night. I'm like, Ryan is like the most vindicated person in the world just going i haven't told you this guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> i've been telling you for years yeah i really uh, hope they don't screw up uh season two yeah, um, yeah. of the show because they do kind of have like i don't know if it's, it was talked about yet but they kind of have this potentiality of something to happen because this is something i didn't actually find out until after which i think also kind of shows you how like good the show is is that you don't even notice uh right away but one of the actors is is trans like so the guy that pl- uh, the girl oh, noticed. there's a girl that's playing kobe. his best friend kobe kobe yeah, Kobe. Kobe. Yeah, that's that is definitely a girl. Yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, um, it's just like there is some some lesser known characters that apparently were race swapped, and yeah. um, and I've talked about this a few times about making the point of as long as it doesn't derail from the story that mm-hmm. is being told, and I don't care. So I kind of. Uh, I kind of compare it to Perry White in Man of Steel, yep. Lawrence Fishburne. Like again, if Lawrence hey, you Fishburne, love Man of Steel, oh, it was one of your favorite <laughs> movies. I <laughs> love that movie. Um, but uh, Lawrence Fishburne being Perry White, like I don't really care. I mean, obviously, I I, I don't like race swapping. Period. But and I don't like Man of Steel. But Perry White being Lawrence Fishburne is not one of my problems in the movie. Now, if Lawrence Fishburne would have been talking about injustice and overcoming, you know, white privilege right. to get that, then it would have been a problem. Much like in this show, if the the black female that was Nami's sister, and they they did they did it right where she they weren't like real sisters. It was because they were you know brought together through a tragic situation and raised together. But if she would have been the whole social justice character, I would have been bitching about that. She wasn't. She was just okay. Fine. It's it's part of the story. Good. Great. There were no so characters we'll that I could think of that were the social justice. They never talked about yeah, any none, of, none of them came off that way it was yeah. just the yeah. adventure it's just the yeah which was great it's just yeah. the, it's really just the casting like it's just yeah. the fact that you know they casted the trans actor to play um but again that's why it's like right now it's really nothing but that's one of the things where like in a season they two could. it's like oh yeah, well, that, they, that, yeah they, that they could, could lean something. into it for season two but honestly i don't give a shit as long as the character is portrayed accurately i mean there, there's plenty of times okay. in like plays like for peter pan example where they cast women to play peter pan because of you know the fact that they sound like a boy who has gone through puberty, you know? So there's certain circumstances where it's like, I don't give a shit as long as it's done properly and they're not leaning into it because of the message. Well, my, my standard has always been, um, I want to recognize these characters in this adaptation. And, and so when you're adapting it, the most important thing is to keep the most important visual identifiers for their characters. And sometimes that is actually can be tied to skin color. Like Little Mermaid, I, I, like that's actually, she's just a redhead. And so it's really hard to try and race change that character and make her feel still like the Little Mermaid. If there are other characters in which their, their skin color is actually a much lesser thing. They have much, they have other really strong visual identifiers like Nick Fury. It's his eye patch, right? And the way he carries himself. And so like, and, and of course, then picking a really strong actor who has a lot of gravitas and stuff like that. Suddenly the race change with Nick Fury, um, w- there's not a problem because I recognize that character. And, and in one piece, there is a, a main character that actually has a race change. It's the one, um, who was, uh, I forget his name is, but he was the one helping the sick girl. Uh, uh, dang it. Yeah. his name? Who's up? Who's up? Yeah. He's not though. He's not. He, no, he's, he's, he's white in the anime. Yeah, he's white. No, he's not. Well, at yes, least his dad, is. his dad is white. Is he? Or he looks I was just like watching an episode looking, with I'm his dad. I'm looking at images on Google right now and he's got pale skin. Am I like going blind? Yeah, let's see. Like right here. Pull. Here, let's see. Let me pull up. Oh, does he have like a slight tan more than oh. the others? Is that he didn't vote yeah, for I mean, Biden? That's what it was. <laughs> I mean, he's a. 
I mean, I don't know the lineage, I, I, but I can just tell you, like, Maybe from a visual quarter quarter standpoint, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you right can't here, tell, man. Right? Just a little, here, a little off. right here. Would Joe Biden here. allow him to yeah. rub the hair you know, on America's Mexico. legs? That's what I want yeah. to know. Yeah. Okay, I mean, he's, he's got a little curly hair. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't think, he, and, and by watching it, chat, what, so what is his, somebody said he's Jamaican. I, yeah, I would say based I, off I would of how say, look, based on they, the lips, I would say <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how they kind of visualize uh, black people in uh, manga based, anime. So based. I think they uh, asked them right. Not in Dragon Ball Z. Is, uh, well, uh, he looks like the character. Is my point. And he, the does. he does. He does. He does. Are there? Yeah. And yeah. and so that's that's the main thing, and that's always been yeah. my stance. Uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on the whole and so <laughs> sometimes it can work and sometimes yeah you, you need to preserve the character including skin tone for to make them remain consistent and feel like a character the right. only thing ryan added in this whole conversation i don't try to talk about what i don't know about <laughs> <laughs> so you know about lips eh? Uh, but overall it's it's phenomenal i hope people check it out um yep. and uh it's done for all i could say is for me for people that are saying like the anime is better i probably agree with that i mean but in the end of the day what this sure. has done is made me interested in the anime and that's what go. it should do mm -hmm. that's yes. what any of these interpretations should do so I talked about like with Death Note, like that. The only way you would watch the live action Death Note and then want to go watch the anime is if you were turning the live action <laughs> off because it's so fucking bad to go watch the anime. But it, it can't be make that go. Bad. Oh, man, <laughs> it, it is that bad. It's not, it's, it's, I haven't. Gonna, it's gonna drive you away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like for like I haven't. I've not watched the anime, the, the live action because I watched the anime and then someone's like check out the check out the live action now and i watched it's the trailer trash. and I'm, oh, dude. I'm calling people up like all these years later i'm like have you seen this fucking what <laughs> this death note and they're like yeah like five years ago oh, what the ago, fuck? <laughs> you know and no. i'm like this is bullshit look what they did to l look what uh -huh. they did to light and yeah. they're like yeah, yeah jeremy are you working on a video or something like, why are you, <laughs> like, like this is bullshit where, where are you been yeah <laughs> no, what's the angle here man better, better example would be the greatest trilogy of all time Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It's nothing like the books. The books are a thousand times better. It's my favorite trilogy of all time, and the books are a thousand times better. Well, they're also and a thousand times longer, too. You can't adapt like a thousand page novel into a movie. But I'm talking about quality, right? Yeah. And, and you can't adapt right. a thousand volume uh, manga into a TV series that's limited to eight episodes. Uh, hopefully, like, like they expand it out to 10. Uh, I think they could. I would with love this, for, with I this would success, love to get a more possibly, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. great having consistently yeah. length episodes too, right? With you know, the Disney show that's like, okay, it could be 20 minutes. Oh, you like to be. consistently yeah. get length. Yeah. 20 minutes. It, it, what this what comes episode back to, six is going to be longer. Well, <laughs> what, what this comes back to is it all comes back to individual leadership. Um, and that's kind of where we're at. Leadership has never been more important than it is right now. Uh, Stranger Things. I think we all expected Stranger Things to fall off a cliff after yep. their misstep of season three. I, I really did. And it kind of got right back on track because they probably recognized, hey, we've probably we've we've overstepped. This is not good. And they did. They they course corrected. That's not an so it's not a Netflix thing as much as it's an individual leadership thing. Now, Netflix is probably is bringing in a lot of garbage for sure, but it still comes back to individual leadership. So one piece because it has the leadership involved, it almost it is is so far so good. It's almost like when Ryan Johnson was working on Breaking Bad, how'd that turn out? Versus Ryan Johnson working on Star Wars, how did that turn out? Bad leadership. Leadership matters right now, and um, if every sports organization was run by Dana White, they'd all be a lot better off. <laughs> but they're not. So bad leadership, good leadership. No, I'll say and, the and last Airbender good. adaptation. Yeah, oh, we'll see. Oh, oh, what, 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 go to your oh, no, no, Netflix no, no, no. doesn't have leadership. They still have that very tech approach of we're just going to throw a bunch of shit up against the wall and mm -hmm. see what works. Yeah. And you know what? Occasionally something's going to work. But most of the time it doesn't because whoever's choosing their fucking shows and their show runners, most of the time Netflix will just buy shit, right? So it's a production company. They make some and they just buy stuff. But now when they started making their own stuff, they didn't have, they still don't have an identity. They still haven't put together four or five consistent seasons of television of anything 
of absolutely anything. The uh, Stranger Things is probably their biggest hit, and it's ha- had two good seasons out of four. So uh, that's probably their their, their best example because they're still new at it. Uh, when we have Paul, we're gonna have Paul Chato on, I think, uh, in two weeks. He'll explain it, like how you 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 have to have an identity as a broadcaster, as a streamer. So many of these streamers. You don't like they have no identity. They're just throwing shit out there. They have no like Disney has no fucking idea what they're doing uh, when it comes to making television. It's it's kind of phenomenal because they owned a TV network. They still do ABC really oh, for the time for, being. Yeah, yeah, for but now. they can't make them for their streaming service. It's like wow, that's oh well. Uh, but uh, this could be a change. This could be a, a, a positive one. Anything. I'm so happy that there's something kind of fun out there. That's just not about like some grim, dark, yeah, um, yes, who hates like, his hates his powers and hates yeah. everything. And, yeah, you know, reluctant hero. And this one's like, ah, I just want to go out and be a pirate king. Let's fucking. And, go. and you know, I want to watch this with my kids. Like when I get home, uh, I'm gonna want to watch the whole One Piece, sh- you know, thing with my kids. And that's a, for me a big compliment to them. And there is something else I would like to say. This this next thing is probably going to be really, really controversial, and it's something that I would usually oh, I disagree with. I, yeah. go right I can't be your friend. I'm sorry, you can't be. No, I, I would usually disagree with this, and I've and I've even argued against it. But I think One Piece has benefited from being released under the binge model. <gasps> I disagree. Oh, I disagree. Oh, oh, so the so binging is my my reasoning. <laughs> My reasoning is that for me, I needed more than one episode to be sold on this show. And the mm-hmm. fact that I was able to go to the next episode so quickly made me get me hooked. I'm not sure I would have continued based on the first episode. I was still so on the fence that I might have forgotten about it come well, next week. When it well, if you remember, my argument really comes down to one thing. Good show versus bad show. That's really what it comes down to. If it's a good show, it'll 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 be successful. If it's a bad show, it won't be like. It, it well, doesn't matter, you know, but I, mean, but I think from a, cons- but the, I would argue model, that one piece would be just a successful released weekly. It would be. Uh, yeah, I agree. Maybe, 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 well, maybe if, if people, people will be about, talking about oh, a longer. Uh, you know, yeah. you know what would happen though, Gary, for that. Yeah. Chad, I, you I, don't I, have to, Chad, when it's done, you, you don't have to watch it weekly. You can binge yes, it when exactly. it's done. When it, that's that's when exactly it's, right. But I when it's waited released until altogether, you don't have to watch it. You don't have to watch it all at once. It's just the same argument. But it burns out quicker. So I, I, from a, from a fan standpoint, I'm fine with that. Like I've said that a million times from a business standpoint, it's suicide. And, and it's proven that way. We get one, one piece, a Wednesday and a stranger things. And then there's a hundred other shows that people forgot about. So well, all, that, same, all that, success you made, all that success you made from one. No, because there's other shows that are episodic that do fine. That do take time. You know what? Star Trek, the next generation took time to get going. Well, of time course it did. I mean, um, I, I just think that you can I can point to bad shows right now that are released weekly and I can point to good shows that are released. Uh, <laughs> you know, okay. okay. I, I am so <laughs> sorry for bringing this up, guys. I'm so sorry. For <laughs> Chad, <laughs> why? <laughs> well, an- another thing that's great about the show is that it, when it comes to diversity of personalities, it's actually refreshing to see that because we've seen shows where all the characters feel like they're the same. You have Luffy, who is very optimistic and positive. You have Zoro, who is a little bit more stern and dour to a point. And then you have Nami. I've gotten, I, like I said, I'm only on episode three, so I haven't seen all of the characters yet. But this is, for me, actually refreshing to see different personalities for a change rather than this the same plank of wood pasted on different characters. Yeah, and by the way, I actually agree with Gary on the fact of I think with, with respect to One Piece, because of the massive fan base that it already had, I think it would still be an equally successful. Yeah, it was I, released weekly because or, it's good. No, because it's, because it would have come together in the long what run. We agree, Jeremy, yeah. like good stuff, binge weekly, no matter when you put it out. Uh, somebody asked me on Open Bar, would Daredevil still be successful today? Yes, yeah. absolutely. It could because it's a fucking good show. Mm-hmm. It's timeless. It's a good show. Uh, well, you see, really, I, the original yeah, this show makes you want to watch more. That's the thing. Well, mm-hmm. I also, I also think, like, well, okay, so I think that there's, uh, uh, again, there's arguments on both sides. I don't want to, I know, fuck you, Shad. Uh, but, uh, you know what, Jeremy? I think, let's, I think, Jeremy, I think, I think we're both in a, you and I should pen a blog to disassociate ourselves from Shad. <laughs> 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 Due to Chad's views on uh, binge versus weekly, we can no longer associate. I'm kidding. I think, I think, I think the argument 
uh, that Gary uh, is, is I'll try to make I'm going to make Gary's argument in terms of like Game of Thrones, which is the most successful kind of show we've seen in, in our lifetimes over that course of you know that period of time. Game of Thrones got more out of being the greatest show on TV because it was a weekly release, whereas if it was a if it was a binge, it would have still been just as popular and successful. It just would have been in smaller spurts, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of the argument there. And it's it still been a been great burn anyway. on this one. Right. Yeah. Like I'd say uh, one piece is probably more popular today than it was a week ago than it was seven days ago because more people are getting into it and this crazy thing is happening it's called word of mouth i know word yeah. of mouth is gonna Weird. make a snowball look all, all w, we've been talking about it and more people are gonna give it a go now and it's just the result yep yep i right. uh i'm i'm happy i'm happy i got something that i'm interested in but uh, you Dude, know what else i'm oh interested my. in f099 i want gary to play f099 that is my goal now what is, <laughs> racing get a new f is racing it's an amazing racing game from the Super Nintendo, and now they just announced yesterday on the Nintendo Direct, or two days ago, 99-player uh, online matches for <laughs> F-Zero, and it is what fucking did it say? chaos. <laughs> it is chaos. And I'm gonna when I saw the playthrough, I was like, oh my gosh, this looks insane. It is fucking crazy. <laughs> I, I, am, I am raging. Raging every time I play this fucking game. I'm gonna I'm Could, this weekend they I'm streaming. Yeah. I wish they would have, but yeah. Disney uh, Disney already stole that one. So I know. Uh, <laughs> all right, I gotta read some soups. Uh if you guys didn't know, um I'm in a hotel room in Paris, France right now. It's uh 1252 a.m. Oh, and I'm Paris. Gay, it's freaking gay. Uh and smelly, <laughs> very smelly. Oh they, they really what does it smell like croissants. Cheese no, and I B.O. Dude, the B.O., some of the B.O. on the tube in London was... Yeah. Oh, that was bad. Fucking stink. But times are by no two. there's no AC to help that either. It's no, there hot. isn't. Yeah, it's been hot, so it's been uh, oof, oof, good. All right, but uh, thanks, everyone, for hanging in on this uh, shit show. Uh, I think the best description of FNT is kind of like uh, the Eurostar that I wrote. It's a bit of a shit show, but it ends up working by the end. So, uh, <laughs> God damn that that Eurostar! I was so looking forward to it, and it was just a train. It's just a train that goes through a tunnel. It's not very, yeah, it's kind of eh, might as well fly over here. Uh, it's a fucking expensive train too. Uh, Rolling the wretched. Uh, he with the uh, waxed balls has uh, donated uh, 25. Oh, is this two of four? There we go. Uh, uh, yeah. Four total. For uh, If my screen blanks out, I'm on French internet right now and it's barely hanging in there. Oh, Very lazy. Is. Yeah. Oui, oui. It's like a little French rat going, wait, wait. Oui, oui. <laughs> oh, smoking hands. a cigarette. Oh. Smoking a they got it. Oh, you yeah. are connected. Oh, oh that's, the, that's the other thing. Is there's like, a bunch of the, the women here look like models and no, they don't wear bras. Melissa pointed that out. I'm like, yeah, hey, they really don't. And they all fucking smoke. They all fucking oh. smoke. They look healthy as hell and they smoke. Welcome uh, to France where it doesn't make any sense. Nope. Uh, rolling the rest. Maybe that's the key, Ryan. Maybe you should get over here. As long as you don't mind some armpit hair, you're good. Uh, rolling the wretched full parts for $100. While FNQ was off in England being gay, I was supporting Chrissy on the home front. Uh, the Saturday show was lacking a few things. Shirtless poetry, assault, first responders, and sorry, Gary, no waxing jokes. I did try to appear incognito, but failed. Uh, part two. Uh, once exposed, I got to hear my three favorite words. You're that guy. Fucking hell. Chrissy asked if I had any marriage advice for her. And I said, I, uh, I said, I go out and leave my wife tied up and locked in the basement. I was joking. <laughs> she was in the closet. <laughs> uh, my shirt was a hit with Gary feeding the FNQ ducks, but I didn't realize the shirt company's default was comic size, <laughs> which made the photo really, really, really small. Go ahead, comics. It's also caused guys to stare at my chest. Still processing that. Well, at least, you know, it's probably as. Uh, can't wait to see <laughs> Mayor in San Diego. Today's Aww. reading is Le 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 Levit Leviticus. 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 <laughs> I'm losing. Even. 
<laughs> I'm going <laughs> Biden. Um, sound. I can't quite see it. There we go. 1822. You shall not wear a man bun. It is an abomination. Hail to FNQ, Fellowship, Chat, Baby Thor, and Hawaiian Pizza. Dan Vasquez is really gay. Ash <laughs> dubbed and neurotic until next week. So long, gay boys. Thank you, Roland. <laughs> Just remember, Roland, you're the one who shaved your balls. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, wax them. You waxed them. Sorry, say, waxed them. I don't them. think shaving's that uh, uncommon there, comics. Well, I meant wax. Sorry, my bad. Apology accepted. I don't know. I think shaving. That could that be worse. That's dangerous. Blades, 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 blades. Yeah. I don't know about the blades. No. Yeah, if you're doing that straight razor stuff down there, I mean, that's... I don't know how many people are straight razoring their balls. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty, pretty ballsy sure if you not. do that. Uh -huh. just be, yeah. That's how you okay. sharpen a straight razor. You pull it real, real tight. <laughs> you sharpen your razor on your balls. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, no, no, yeah, no. that's right. Yeah, you get the bat wing. What kind of balls do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Balls of leather, I guess. <laughs> Guy Incognito has gifted 50 Nerdrotic memberships for $250. I wish I could yell, but I can't. $250. $250. A 50 gifted you, memberships. Jeremy. Let's bring the Cobra cast into it. Gifties. Let's see some gifties in the chat right now. All right. Give me a little bit of that hype. I'll Thank read you, those Jeremy. memberships off, man. Let's go. Let's go send some more. I'll, I'll fucking read them off right now. Let's go. Uh, yeah, because I sound like fucking NPR in here, and it's super gay. I hi, this is, hi, this is hi, Nerdrotic. This is I'm in Gay Perry. Nerdrotic at I've had Perry. I've had grotesque sex with <laughs> Az. And, uh... I just received a proper British goodbye, and now I have a limp. <laughs> I am in MAGA country. Uh -huh. I had oh. an English breakfast with bloody sausage. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that time of the month. Oh. That's after you sharpen your straight razor. Brian beat me to it. <laughs> I had, um, was it black pudding? Black pudding. It was black pudding. But I like yeah, it wasn't blood sauce. I'm not going to eat that shit. It black pudding was actually... Pig's blood and pork. No, it's not. Black pudding is, is like stuffing. That's all it was. It was good. It was really good. Tastes like stuffing. Uh, not another dime has gifted... 50 or no 10 neurotic memberships for $50. <laughs> I mean, backwards, backwards. 10. Now that another dime's going, no, I didn't. What? <laughs> like, oh shit. I'll go with that. It's like, wait a minute. He's all much. shit. <laughs> great track, great track. Uh, Eric Guidewall has gifted 15 neurotic memberships for $75. <laughs> Thunderstrike. I donated $50 and says, last Saturday, my wife went into labor three months early. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, She's been doing fine. Our daughter, child number two, is it. doing good, but will live in the NICU for a few months, but she yeah. will live. And that's the important part. Thought Glad to hear it, man. Congrats. Yeah. We that's will awesome. send that is, out thoughts and that, prayers. That's, that's just, that's just that, that is scary. That is, that is yeah. scary, yes. Really scary. Yeah. She's doing all right. I'm so thankful her. technology has developed so much now that that can happen and yeah. everything can be fine. Yep. Thank you is a scary place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thoughts and prayers out to you. Good vibes. Should be all right. Should be all right. Thank you very much. Um, Ministry of Wrong Think for $49.99. Still glad Ahsoka learned she could literally girl boss her way back to life just by <laughs> learning to desire to live. AI doesn't stand a chance to get these writing chop. <laughs> 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 It does kind of feel like it's like, hey, here's all the episodes of Rebels and everything. <laughs> Write a script. <laughs> this it's you know it's so that when she comes back to life, you realize it's happened like three times before. So you're not surprised by it. <laughs> you know what? If you had just taken the Clone Wars and shot them live action, it would have been a, at least it was a story before. It, it's a, like it, you There's might as people well that are asking that. for that now after the Hayden, like young Ahsoka stuff. It's oh, like... That. Do you reckon they could pay for the de-aging through the whole series? I think it'd be no. too, way too expensive, but yeah. like also, I mean, if that's what you want, I guess. I, I mean, those stories are those stories are there. You know, those stories have been told in you know in animated form. All that you're gonna do is probably just retcon a lot of shit. You know, if you tell <laughs> those stories again, or you try to find more stories to fit in there. But this is a a seven a seven season show that goes over basically a, an 18 month period in time. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just too bad they got rid of that EU that they could have adapted till the end of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, no. Uh, they wanted to be free. Pay. Well, they didn't have any well, books to base anything I mean, off of. They had no, no source no, material. No, no source material. material. No comics no. or books, yeah. No. But they'd have to pay out royalties to the authors of those books in Disney. Is if they did exist. Yeah. If, yeah. That's Which a big they if. haven't done. But that, that's a good problem to have because it means you're actually getting enough people to watch it. There's royalties to pay out. Right <laughs> yes. now, they don't have that fucking problem. <laughs> they don't even have that. <laughs> She-Hulk writers are getting paid $64. Whatever. <laughs> and that's too much. That's too much. Uh, WG has donated $50 on the Streamlab side. So, oh, please, WG. WG. Ahsoka's a great show and a good time. Can't can't you all just what? Wait. Oh, was uh, was just told I was con I confused a great show and a good time with pop culture's version of dick cancer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Uh, another gym. Uh, I love WG. Uh, Sheep yep. Sidian Black Aragorn. What's up for $50? Hale, when is the Wisconsin meetup? Can I get back from this meetup first? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not road. allowed. When's uh, Wisconsin? November. Do you know what time in November? That's going to be cold. Sometime in sleeping. November. I'm doing a show. Don't sleep. You're going to be ass deep in snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's in November. In uh, it's in the first part of November. It's in a bar. So uh, when, when I get back... <laughs> When I get back, sheep, I'll get you the date. Okay. Because <laughs> I'll be home. asking too. Trust me. Yep. Uh, no, people were asking at the meetup. <laughs> the uh, reminder Amarada has, oh, I didn't have to say horror. Horror Amarada. Amarada. I did that anyway. Uh, has passed 500 subs on YouTube. Congrats, Ooh, Congrats. Good job. Well done. Now she's racing to 1,000. Uh, she's oh. doing a 24-hour Halloween stream at 1,000. You are mm. crazy. That's, that's awesome. I, I, I love can't that. even do eight hours. Yeah. Jeremy, did you do a 24-hour one once? Yep. Did I remember that incorrectly? That was, 100, was when I hit 100,000 subscribers. On yeah. Gamers. When do you get delirious? <sighs> I was struggling around 18 hours in. I was really struggling. And I don't remember the last four hours of it. Jay Hellstorm did like a 72-hour stream. Damn. Jay's crazy. Yeah, he's he a psychopath. Hard. He always is. So, yeah, I mean. Adderall, something like that. Okay. <laughs> no. yeah. That's understandable, then. <laughs> Lots of caffeine. Dude, if I was streaming back in my meth days, ooh, they would have been entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> they would have never ended. You would have had a million subscribers. Yeah. All right, Gary, I can get you to a million subs right now. <laughs> if Gary will do a meth stream if he hits a million before Dan Vask. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> Let's go. I hear the sound of Melissa booking a flight to Florida right now. <laughs> hey, dude. I'll be in my tidy whities within three hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Me, White, because my wife would kill me. Uh, and then Jeremy. <laughs> yes. Oh, she would kill me before she killed Jeremy. Oh uh, no, she would kill you first, and then book the flight to his yeah, stream, Florida. His stream will start out like the first episode of Breaking Bad. <laughs> it would. <laughs> You know what uh, part you're playing, quarterback? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, subscribe and make her regret it. I'm sure she'll make me suffer with her. YouTube.com slash horror amarada. Horror, horror, horror amarada. Horror, horror, horror. Dude, there's a few names I have struggled with. I, I finally just stopped saying the part I can't say, and I just abbreviated it. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> I, I have to, it. or you just rush through it. You know, it's like the French language, dude. There's uh, <laughs> Carrie Smith. I saw the great Carrie Smith today. We hung out, uh, and uh, she talked about how there's no um, 
what, but no consonants in the French language. They just go. Language. It's like they're just buzzing in a fucking microphone. Uh, it makes no sense. I think they're just fucking with us. <laughs> actually, a language. Uh, no, I just uh, there's a lot of words I can't say, and well, there's actually more words I'm starting not to be able to pronounce because uh, uh, I'm getting old and dying. Basically, uh, okay. <laughs> just a little more of it, you know, just a little bit. Can't wait till dementia kicks in and I can see Star Wars oh. for the first time again. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can run for office. Uh, I could. <laughs> okay. uh, Gary, 100% of anime fans don't give a fuck. Japan is an ethno state. Degeneracy, notwithstanding, anime fans will tell you to get fucked either way because they are extremely passionate. It's better, or it's one thing woke West haven't ruined yet. Uh, tread lightly. What the, in the United States? Yeah, I, I well, they, they don't, well, they don't give a shit. Who was That's, thinking that Gary was saying that as a criticism? <laughs> I yeah, I was not saying it as a criticism. By the way, just so you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 Ryan's the enemy Ryan. here for the anime fans. Okay, yep. Ryan's the enemy here. So. Yeah, I'll fuck all of you. <laughs> Hold the line, Japan. Hold the Japan, line. Japan, Japan is very good at preserving hey, their culture. Let's just say. Are we getting a Japanese? Hey, they made it through a couple of, fucking nukes. Yeah. So. Are, we, are we getting a Japanese release of Oppenheimer? Is did, did it release there? Or is it going to? Because I heard it's probably oh, man. Great. now. Japan's gonna hate us. Gosh. No, no, no. Here's the beauty. It's actually the Oppenheim third entry in the Oppenheimer franchise there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't know if it's Ryan. Has it opened there or not? Have you heard? I don't know. I'm not sure. Because the I don't beauty think so. of it is, is it's flirting with around, right now it just calls across 900 million. It's projected to be around 950 million. If it gets amazing. a Japanese release, if it crosses Japan a million got it to a billion. Japan, I'm sure it's going to bomb there. That'd be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. That'll oh, really well. make it explode. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that this movie is over nine hundred million dollars is retarded. It is retarded it in makes every no way. Sense. I, I, as a person that loved it, and I said it when I fucking saw it, I was like, "Normies are not going to like this movie." I'm clearly wrong. Yeah. Well, maybe people just want well-made films. And maybe like, even if. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? Well, I mean, it's rated it, it, R it, biopic that has three no hour action. Go back to old Hollywood. I mean, it was filled with movie stars, fucking yeah. filled with them, and people still like that shit. Apparently, where like actors who can actually act based on their skill, you know, as opposed to being hired up for diversity. Nolan is king, though. That's yeah, there was no it. diversity in the movie. Maybe that's what made it so successful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ava. Well, the French oh, did oh, cancel oh, Harry. Oh, 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 oh. No more someone internet for you. Someone no, heard you. what he was saying about their language, and they. Uh, they, they You're gonna talk about this like Jacques, that? Jacques just came around the corner and fucking ended him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Put out a cigarette. I don't even know. If he, I don't even. I don't even. Is he running? Who's running the street? Gary, Gary, Gary running uh, it. What's up? Gary What's up? Is, We're good. I mean, I can read the rest of the soups if needed. But uh, <laughs> let's go. Uh, he sure. might not be coming back. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Uh, we got Ian so forth has gifted ten neurotic memberships for ten. fifty dollars. Get the clapping. Get the clapping. Get the clapping. <laughs> 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 Um, Sorry. Uh, okay, Adonis Adams for 50 Canadian uh, says, as a Castlevania nerd, I ask that all of you not watch the upcoming Netflix anime, Castlevania Nocturne. The previous anime didn't respect the source material. It's heavily subversive, woke, and the creators of Nocturne have already attacked the fans. Oh, no. wow. I, That's what I, I heard uh, about. It. I haven't seen the Castlevania uh, animes, obviously the old school games back in the day. I actually need to go back and play them. I always heard they were good. I heard you like, play, wait, like, have you not played them? No, no, the, the, the show. Well, the yeah. anime, the anime, okay. okay. Well, Getty? I've heard Absolutely, Netflix I've played the game. It's pretty good, actually. Yes. Uh, Get, Symphony Getty, of Night, are you back? One of the Symphony of Night. I am back. Best games ever. 
Are we talking Harry. about the Castlevania on yeah. Netflix that Warren Ellis? We thought Ellis? that Jacques yep. got you. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> the French internet got me. Uh, <laughs> but Warren Ellis was then booted because uh, he wanted to sleep with women. Hmm. Oh. Oh, you can't well, do that. He was a, he can't was a be fired guy. from every job. <laughs> well, yeah, a whisper network got together. Uh, a bunch of women who wanted to sleep with him to get access to writing and thought that fucking Warren Ellis would make them a good writer. Then they found out they just fucked Warren Ellis and didn't become a good writer, so they wanted to cancel him after the, his jizz didn't make them good writers. It's not magical. It's, it's, yeah, he doesn't have magic jizz. He's just a good writer, uh, but you fucked him. That was your decision. Uh, hey, Gary, I'm going to go and bounce real quick because I'm about to get ready for my stream. i got a couple things i got to do. All right. so, How much you're about more to end it go? soon, right? Um, We're about I know to you're end not... it very soon. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say goodbye, everybody. Love you, Friday Night Tights. I'm glad that uh, Chrissy was here from the start and she didn't get forgotten by Gary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, I'm Chrissy. Here. Hi. Hey. Hey. How's it going? I'm here. Hi, Chrissy. I didn't see you there. That's probably sort of wear shorts and sit in a way where you couldn't forget that she was here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. That might get clipped. Uh, but oh. I just want to say, uh, Shad, we all have your back, brother. So thanks, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy you're Genuinely. part of the crew and. Yeah, man. Yeah. So really fellowship felt- always re- representing. You guys are the best. So, uh, Gary, Definitely. Uh, I don't know when the hell you're coming back, but have a safe trip whenever the hell hey, that I'm is. I'm coming back Sunday, man. So, uh, man, everybody else, have a good night. I'll see you on Cobra Cast in a you. couple of hours. Good night, everybody. Bye, Thanks, guys. Jeremy. Bye. Hey, it's Jeremy. Bye. Take care, man. Peace. Bye. 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 Jeremy, Geeks and Gabers 199. Let's give him a, <sighs> a little pause. We don't have much. Hey, can you read the 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 soups X-ray girl? Because I pull it up, I will get kicked off sure, the screen. Sure, sure. <laughs> Arigato, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, for forty nine ninety nine, I heard they're making <laughs> they're remaking that movie about the guy who saved a bunch of Jews from the National Socialists in Poland in the forties. He's a gay POC now. Call it Schindler's Lisp. <laughs> uh, wow. All right, that's a really long setup. Uh, yes. I think I just... delivery had a little bit to do with this. <laughs> yes, I just started Sea of Stars and so far so good. Nice animation and music. Hail. Hail to you. Hail. Hail. Uh Aww. Raider 03 for $50 puts a silverback emoji and one of these ones. I don't know what these are called. <clears throat> Rock. 50. Rock and roll. It means Hail Satan. No, it doesn't. Oh mean... yeah, Hail Satan <laughs> and uh how dare Masons. you all? <laughs> I, I feel, so guys, I think I'm gonna have to disassociate myself uh, from. As a Christian, I don't know why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm hanging out with y'all in general, you know, because uh, Christians aren't supposed to hang out with other people, apparently. That's right. I believe in Atlantis, aren't I? Some kind of heretic or something? <laughs> you should be burned at the stake. Oh, gosh. Like a witch. Uh, Nick Hammerschmidt for a hundred dollars. You guys asked last week why Christians watch FNT. I thought I would share my perspective. I have been raised Catholic and practiced my whole life, and I can tell you that all of you have more integrity than political figures, political commentary, or Vatican. God bless. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you. Wow, that, was, that was very kind. I'm just waiting for the, but God you're still going you. hell. <laughs> <laughs> no, that usually yeah, comes with it. That's, that's in play. That's in play. Yeah. <laughs> Except Odin. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Oh, no, we're dragging him down with us. <laughs> Shad, Shad's going to his special heaven, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mormons, yeah. Mormons have actually a really cool type of heaven. So, oh. Right on. Is it in Utah? Well, no, 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 but uh, that's where the new Jerusalem will be during. Okay, the long, yeah. cool. Maybe I'll move there. It'll be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. Skinwalker Especially... Ranch. New oh, Jerusalem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? The Inquisition. What's forbidden frontier? If you don't know what he's talking about. I like that there's aliens in the chat right now. Yeah, right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, eighty Victorium, four parts for eighty dollars. Says. Hello, FNT. Wanted to thank you all for helping me get through some dark times. Shad, your video to young men about hope meant a lot. It feels very hopeless and demoralizing right now. A message about hope was sorely needed. Gary, mm. appreciate the holiday streams. 
Really hard staying sober during the holidays. Nice having something to occupy myself as whenever I need a laugh, I just go to your golem stream. No matter what <laughs> gets me laughing. <laughs> yes. Uh, Man, thank you for that. Oh, I just oh, want to say ahead. thank you for that super chat. Like, uh, and I just had a, a talk with Carl Benjamin, Sargon of a card on that same type of subjects for, for young men. And it was one of the best conversations I've ever had on the subject. So I encourage you to pay attention to the loose eaters and uh, look out yeah. for a really special video conversation between me and Carl on this. It, uh, yeah, it's like, it gave me lots of warm fuzzies basically afterwards. Like a genuinely one Aww. of the best talks on fatherhood and the importance of it I've ever had. Yeah. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, Odin, love how you've shown being a person of faith doesn't mean giving up nerddom. Gotten me to return to my faith. Ryan, your sunny disposition always brightens my day. JK. <laughs> Jeremy, I just <laughs> yeah. can't stop thinking about you. Oh, dang. Um, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Jeremy, I appreciate you convincing me that Trump supporters are good peeps. And now I'm fully on the Trump 2024 train. F. Joe Ooh. Biden. Thank you all. Hail the 199 pineapple pizza rules. Forgot Chrissy, but am out of money. <laughs> oh. Thank, Thank you, you AD Victoria. Aww. That was very sweet. <laughs> and we have Patrick Ells for $50. Ryan was in the Navy. Our typical type of joke is more than a little sus. It's why the other branches look at us funny. Thank you. Yeah, they, they look a lot like those marine uniforms in one piece. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. They look uh, like... I can... It's like a, like the scouts, essentially. It's, uh, it's uh, gay. Yeah, yeah, very gay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are all fawning over this gay-ass show. Uh, <laughs> I, can't why, I didn't watch it. Why are you gay? Why are, are you gay? gay? Uh, we got Quinn Belzer for another $50. Armored Core 6 is better than Star Fail. I'm just putting it out there. Okay. It probably is. As a gamer, Gary, you'd know? As a gamer, I would. Well, I, the only thing I'm, I'm more of an expert in than gaming is is anime and manga. But <laughs> as a gamer, I'll say yes. Uh, Crit Nature for 50 Swiss francs says, Hail FNT, first timer here. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Gary, since you are already in the European neighborhood, any plans to visit Zurich PopCon? London wasn't possible for me and would be nice to shake hands. Also, you look like you've been kidnapped in this room. LOL. <laughs> I, this is actually a pretty luxurious room uh, for France. Uh, <laughs> but my prison cell was bigger. Oh, dang. So no, it's like a California yeah. efficiency is what you're saying. I am not kidnapped by ISIS. Do not send help. <laughs> blink, blink, blink. <laughs> uh, Joel Silverman for $50 says, Hail and Shana Tova. First time super chat. I normally work on Fridays, so this is my first time watching live. Hey. I've heard you talk about a Wisconsin meetup. Do you have a date for that yet? Early November. DVD. DVD. That's all I can uh, say. <laughs> A. Marcellus for $50 says, let's say for argument's sake that Disney used George's treatments. Luke still would have died by episode nine. Would you guys be okay with this and with the grandchildren of Anakin becoming the new leads of the franchise? Yes. If, yes. That was the, right. the story. And he would have been in seven, eight, nine, and it would have probably been a heroic death. Han probably, I, for one, I don't think they needed to kill anybody to move a story on, you know? I, I don't really understand that, but uh, if it was years later, yes, I would have been fine if uh, George Lucas had done it, and it was a good story. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and this is the last one of the night. Xenaximus for $50 says, One Piece has been around for over 26 years and yes. almost 22,000 pages worth of manga. Still far faster to read than to try watching the anime. If you think things in its world are weird now, just wait for the Skypea arc. Glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> enjoying the hell out of it. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone who's left a super chat and donation. Sorry, we got to cut this one short because I need to go to bed because I need to start the long journey home. 
I miss Texas. Uh, Europe has been great. Yeah. It's been fantastic, but I want to fucking go home. <laughs> You'll be happy to know it's no longer 100 degrees here. Yes. Yeah. That's good. It's only what 95. Yeah. Oh wow! So, oh, it's nice and cool outside. Oh, yeah, cold front you can go thing, you know? <laughs> hey, I'll take it's ninety-two over one hundred and five. Oh yes, yeah, so, yeah. Um, thanks everybody for putting up with this shit show today because <laughs> my internet was crap. So thanks everyone. To, the The team pulled it together today and did a great job. Thanks everyone who watched uh, my last video. Again, the team pulled it together and did a great job on Watch that one. Again. So well, yeah, it was a good well, video. Guy. Well done, guys. Uh, let's get on out of here. Again, thanks to the Mod Rodics. I, I Real quick, rest in peace, Cardinal Sin. Yes. Uh, we, yes. Uh, yes. Cardinal Sin passed away. I'm not sure what the details were, but I just heard today. So rest in peace. Yeah. I heard about that last night. It's very, yeah. very unfortunate. Uh, quarter, uh, comics division. Sorry. Hi, I'm comics division. You can follow me. Did... What's that? I said I forgot what order I did this in for a second. Sorry. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, no, no worries. Um, uh, hi everyone, comics division. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, and uh, as always, guys, great hanging out with all of you. See you next Friday. See you next Friday, Odin. Hey, I, I'm going to be out for a little bit because uh, <clears throat> next Friday, likely sometime on next Friday, my baby girl will will be here unless she comes uh, before then uh, as a as a bit of a surprise. But uh, it's been always awesome to to come on here and to talk with y'all and check me out over at OMB Reviews. And I love y'all. And again, thank y'all very much for all the kind words. Yeah. Thank Congrats. you for helping the u- human race carry on, carry on by having the only baby. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> My children are the only ones left. The year is 2023. The children of men. Is... One. We're like one last pregnant Ch- woman. Children of men. Yeah. 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 Fantastic movie, but that's the idea. Children that's of that. Odin. Children of Odin. <laughs> <laughs> children of religious men. <laughs> <laughs> Agu. Ooh, you can follow me x-ray girl um on youtube i also uh do poor choices we did an episode with culture casino uh which i've called dadcast sorry i stole that um but uh we just want freaking you know, same... wow well, dang you i mean technically we coming on youtube the original something cast whatever i'm know. proud of you i'm proud wow. of you take that shit and run with it go girl <laughs> <laughs> so yeah hoping to have more people over there so yeah sub to poor choices as well and uh human cyborg relations so yeah thank you ask for forgiveness later do not ask for permission you've learned well <laughs> had one you have <laughs> this is where you stay you're talking about Can I need a Jedi yet? Uh, you guys already stabbed me in the back with your Vegemite and voting for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to show you that. Uh, uh, that's that's going to be great. Yeah. great uh, I'm just looking forward to the Von Jovi song at this point. Oh, fuck. Get him out of here. Fucking <laughs> 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 uh, 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 Yo, uh, it was a great show. It was awesome talking about One Piece. Uh, I'm going to go take care of my wife. And it's a great excuse to watch more One Piece. So yes, uh, hell yeah! I'll see you guys I'm, next week. I'm gonna watch another episode tonight, bro. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> I'm sad there's not more to watch right now. I don't know. Uh, Shad and Brooks. Thank Sorry, you. we can't be friends anymore, buddy. I know. Um, it's fun. I feel so. Yeah. But no, genuinely, you guys are all wonderful. Uh, the fellowship are brilliant. Thank you, everyone, for the support. Love being here. And uh, I think people know where to find me. So, uh, oh, but pay, like, seriously, though, pay attention to the Lotus Eaters podcast uh, and the conversation I have with Carl Benjamin. Uh, genuinely, for, I, it was something special. And so, uh, yeah, I'll keep an eye out for that. Lotus Eaters uh, yeah, podcast the Lotus is on YouTube and of course lotuseaters.com. You can check. Keep They're out. awesome. I watch their videos every morning. Yeah, yeah, I was on the I was on the podcast today, and there's already videos out from the podcast on the Lotus Eaters YouTube channel. You can check that out as well. Yeah. Uh Chrissy Mayer. <gasps> Great to be here. Uh really fun show. Uh and I just thought that one piece was Frank's new nickname for me now that we're married. <laughs> <laughs> 
For better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> you get to keep your job, Chrissy. <laughs> um, I got a gig for anybody who's in the New York or upstate New York area. I'm doing a gig in Mayapack on the 23rd. Uh, and then I'll be in Minnesota, October 21st. Nick Ricade is actually going to be opening for me. That'll be fun. What? Uh, what? Yes. That yeah, he's going to host or do a guest spot. I said, do whatever. So that'll be exciting. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then I got Long Island coming up October 27th and 28th, Tampa, December 3rd, and San Diego, January 5th and 6th. So for tickets, go to chrissymayer.com. And on Sunday, we have Simpcast with one X ray girl. Ooh. So tune in. Uh. Do, I, do I have my calendar right? Yeah, X ray girl. Daisy Cousins, Wicked Virtue, and Critical Drinker will be on uh, this what? Sunday. Simp. I hope I didn't. I hope you didn't forget. And now I'm just reminding no, you. No, no. I uh, okay. <laughs> Critical Drinker on Simpcast. That'll be interesting. Yeah, simping all around. There's a lot of simps for a lot time. of people simp for him. <laughs> at the meetup oh my goodness yeah <laughs> that was fun uh thanks for being here chrissy we missed you last week thanks for having me when i remembered you were gone <laughs> 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 ryan thanks for staying the whole time even though you didn't watch one piece yeah I, well like i didn't know we were supposed to and then like yesterday you're like hey watch one piece and it's like <laughs> i know i know no it's cool it's all good uh, I knew it but i'm glad you guys are enjoying it the more people tell me to watch it the less likely i am to watch it <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll read 1984 instead <laughs> yeah yeah i, I read like this is the thing i read 1984 when i was in high school and then i read it again like five years ago or something but it was just an example uh yeah come follow me i'm just trying to grind away youtube's been uh the youtube algorithm shifted very much on like august 1st it's just going through mm. one of those cycles so i'm yeah. sure it'll kick back up that's just how it is but yeah no, just august, august is the uh, slowest time of the year dude absolutely like it's the dead ad money so that's why people I, are going back to school and whatnot so i think that has something to do with it. and do things in august uh but it'll definitely kick back into gear uh <clears> come this fall don't even worry about it oh yeah just watch uh just keep grinding you're doing a great job i watch all your videos i like all your videos so even yeah, you have good videos man and cheers well it's weird I, here they come I'm out a big fan of, of uh you know of uh what is it about not not uh quality over quantity i'm the opposite i'm all about quantity over quality let's get as much shit out there as i possibly can a lot to talk about but you're also to the point in your videos, which I think yeah. is also very refreshing. Don't sell yourself short. What you do, not everybody can do. Okay. Yeah. I could never I could never do what you do, for instance. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Same. Ryan, you uh, suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to take him down a peg. There it is. <laughs> Thank you, Garrett. <laughs> My computer's been on top of this. I was I I just want to show this before I go. I don't buy Marvel Legends anymore because they're shit. But they fucking made the orb they made the orb one of my favorite villains from ghost rider with the guy with the <laughs> eyeball head you know i always wear a shirt they made a fucking orb so i got this in a french comic store that had giant pride flags all over it by the way uh called <laughs> album comics i was so happy to, it's like you know i probably could have got this in america but i'm like fuck no man this guy's going to my luggage i'm so happy that this exists and he almost has kind of a reverse stars and he has a stars and bars thing going too, which is kind of different from his yeah. costume. But yeah, yeah, it's like, all right, way to go. I like him even more. So he's like a racist eye. Looks like an evil, uh, evil kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be. It's yeah, you know, he's a Ghost Rider villain from the seventies. But uh, deep cut. I was so happy about that. But I've had a great time. Thanks for uh, hanging out with the show uh, with us today i'm fucking tired it's like 1 <laughs> i'm losing it so we're just gonna end it and uh who's who do we have next week we got joel barry from the babylon b oh wow Ooh, yeah. nice, nice. Oh. Yeah, i wonder who pulled that one off for us <laughs> i don't know who that thanks. hey thanks no, actually girl good job <laughs> thank you <laughs> you're very welcome Damn. Barry. Oh, you're so good at your job <laughs> no thanks Garrett. uh we'll see you next week effort. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Farewell. Bye. Bye.
flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT Blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. <laughs> Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come.
Okay, so now that it's just me here, I'm going to finish